Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 20th GPAC meeting. Um, I know, right? If this were a wedding anniversary, I don't know what 20 is, but it's something good. Um, what? It's paper? 20's paper? Then congratulations, there's a lot of paper on the table for all of you. Um, so we're gonna, um, we are gonna start off here again. I'm Matt Ramey. What? I'm getting recorded. Is it, is it off now? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Um, so we're gonna, get, we're gonna get started here. Uh, Susan Harden is not here tonight. She will be here tomorrow night uh, with us. Um, as we start, I'm gonna turn it over to Doug to give a few comments. Great. Thank you very much, Matt. It's great to see everybody. I'm glad to see everybody's making it through the snow, ice, sleet, and hail, and all that good stuff. And yes, we are still in California. <laughs> so um, with that, I just wanted to mention that um, one, you know, GPAC, we, you know, we, went, we went out of our way to try to get the GPAC members in to represent the diversity that exists here in our community and to help discuss something as important as zoning, land use, and the future of our city 20, 30 years down the road. Okay, so we have that diversity represented here. We always welcome public comment public comment. People are always welcome to do emails or make phone calls to a lot of us on the committee. I know that's true. And I know I've gotten several myself. But with that said, I don't feel that it's always possible for people to make those communications ahead of time. And I think it's got to be somewhat frustrating to hear all of us discuss it ahead of time and then speak at the end. So if you give, give me a little leeway tonight, and if we could spend the first 30 minutes and listen to public comment first. Would that be OK? How many of you plan on speaking tonight? OK. Well, maybe. OK. All right, well, if somebody's planning on speaking, uh, if that's OK with the rest of the GPAC, I'd like to go ahead and recommend that we uh, keep it at the three minutes, then we have one speaker so far. Sure. Right. So is the intent that we would this? I, uh, the, the question is, would we continue this in future meetings? What my intent would be is for land use, for the land use planning. I think this is, uh, it's all very important that we're discussing with the general plan, but land use in particular, uh, there's so many different ideas and thoughts that people get as they hear or as they see the information published. So I would like to recommend that we do it just for the land, land use meetings. And let's see how it goes. And if everybody works together and tries to minimize how much we talk, including myself, <laughs> but get our points across, uh, then I think that could work out really well. So um, question? Can I, oh, there, there I am. Um, uh, can I suggest that maybe we have some at the beginning and at the end? Because one person said, yeah, I want to talk. And another one said, maybe after we, I, I imagine that yeah. some things might come up while we are discussing it that somebody would want to comment on. Did, I would, would that take work? that recommendation. Yeah, and especially since we only have one speaker currently, this may jog, jog some thought process. Mark, yeah. Two speakers up front. I just know some people really want to be heard before we really make decisions. And I want to recognize that one of my colleagues is here tonight, too, Jeanette Sanchez Palacios. She's also uh, stepped in for tonight. Um, so with that, let's take some public comments. Okay. There are microphones around the room, which we did from last Except time. Just, so. Oh, there we go. go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, so can I, just because procedurally, I think it would be important to be consistent. So can we um, then agree that we would allow for 15 minutes of public comment at the beginning of the meeting and the balance would be at the end of the meeting? And that that would be, because I know that tomorrow is a more contentious group, uh, property, like, I don't mean, not contentious people, contentious area of like discussion and so I just want to make sure that we're consistent so that tomorrow if we have 40 people who want to speak we're not starting our meeting an hour and a half in 
what my intent was, and I missed the key point, is that I'd like to take up to 30 minutes worth of uh, public comments up front. Because you're absolutely right, we have a lot of work we have to get done, but I also want to make sure that the public that's taken time to, out to be here tonight be, be heard at a point that they feel most valuable, okay? So if we only have two speakers right now speaking up front, then we can take the rest of the comments at the end. I'm perfectly fine with that, okay? Thank you for that, Sabrina. I'm sorry I missed that point. <laughs> okay. Oh. Thanks. And then one other point of clarification, so, and uh, Doug, this is actually for you. So if someone speaks at the beginning, yeah. can they also speak at the end? Because then... If they use their full three minutes. Okay, but what happens if we have 30 people who want to speak in 30 minutes to do it? Then they, they get three minutes total. That's how I would do it. Okay. Only three minutes a day. Three minutes. <laughs> three minutes a day. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll divide by, if we have too many people, we'll divide by the time. We we'll divide by the time. Okay, right. so whatever that time is, is how much people get. Making That's it correct. Okay. okay. All right. Public comment at the beginning. So, um, who had said they wanted to do public comment at the beginning? We have one here. Um, Marianne? Sure. We, you can certainly wait until the end. That's fine. Um, anyone else want to? You would like to speak at the beginning? Yes. Okay. Um, why don't you? You can fill it out. You can fill it out after here. Do you want to come up to the front so because the camera's up there? So uh, first, Doug, um, thank you for. I was one of the people that wrote an email, so I appreciate you giving us an opportunity to speak. And t just my thought more was during the deliberations. You know, not when there's an open. You know, just at the start, but. Like tonight, there's three different, or I forget how many, three or four different sections of town that you're going to be talking about. So somewhere in the middle, maybe after Matt gives a presentation on the area, and then ask for public input, and then, you know, let the GPAC go on with that. For me to just come up here out of nowhere and, and not have any traction or a particular aspect to talk about, that's, you know, a little tough. So... My, do you understand what I'm saying? It's that, that way. And so I, to me, as a citizen, that would be a little bit easier. Um, it, just a suggestion. So thank you. Is any, anyone else who would like to give a comment now? We'll, and then we'll have some time at the end as well, afterwards, to provide input. OK. Let's jump into the presentation. Um, again, this is going to be a very short presentation here just to get everyone lined up. We have our GPAC meeting protocols. Next. Um, GPAC members, um, we are noting who, um, who is here and who is not here. Again, we have most of our uh, GPAC members here tonight, so thank you all for coming. I know we have, we have another meeting tomorrow night and then one in two weeks. It's a lot of work, um, and we really appreciate all the time and thoughts, uh, time putting into it and thoughts you're giving us. Next slide. Um, our, um, our goal tonight, we're going to use the same process that we used last time um, with two exceptions. One, um, we had a little, well, three exceptions. One, a little bit of public comment at the beginning. Two, you all have microphones at the table, so that'll make it easier. And three, there's 11 by 17 maps um, on the table, so you can read those um, a little bit easier. Um, so we're going to start, um, continue our discussion of the east side, uh, then we are going to move into the college area, then Johnson, and then Five Point Specific View Mall. Now, at our next meet, I could go to the next slide, and end with public comment. Um, we, um, we just want to highlight and just remind everyone about the outreach and engagement that we've had on the project, and particularly for the land use alternatives. Um, we have... Um, done a lot of outreach to inform the community about the process from the very beginning, mailings, uh, newspaper ads, um, lots of social media. So it's really been out there quite a bit, and you can see the, the detailed information here. And we're getting lots and lots of hits on the project website, and we have from the very beginning. Um, we've had a lot of, next slide, a, not a, a lot of um, um, engagement efforts. Um, again, we're at our 20th GPAC meeting. We've had educational forums, pop-up events. 
um, stakeholder interviews, council meetings, office hours, community surveys. We've gone out to the um, to the community councils for two rounds, and we're going to go out again. So we've gotten a lot of input overall throughout the process, and we have lots of information that's on the website and that has fed into this process. So we have gotten a lot, a lot of input. We'll get more from you all and more from the public tonight as well. Um, we are, our process here, just to remind everyone of what we're doing, um, we have five meetings to develop the land use alternatives or the land use preferred land use direction for focusing on the, on specific geographic areas, then we're going to pull all of it together and come back to you in April with what the big picture looks like so we can talk about that and make any additional decisions we have to make. Um, we're discussing each area, and as we did last time, we're going to do a, a vote by show of hands on who, um, whatever the group comes up with as the preferred direction um, or a proposed direction, we will vote on that proposed direction. The meetings are held here from 6 to 9. We're going a little bit longer to allow for public comment and more conversation. Um, as we said, tonight's meeting is finishing the East Side College, Johnson, and then Five Points. Uh, Pacific View Mall. Now, we got requests that tomorrow start with West Side and Downtown, and so there's assurances that we are going to do that. So anything we don't finish tonight is going to get moved to two weeks from now, on the 21st, which means that tomorrow, regardless of where we stop today, tomorrow is going to be West Side and then Downtown, because we know that there's going to be, we know there's a lot of um, residents who want to come out and talk about that. So we want to make sure there was some assurances there. Um, and, and again, after that, we'll continue on our list, Midtown, uh, Arundel North Bank, SOAR, and then a citywide review. And again, anything we don't cover, plus some of the other topics that we need to dive deeper into. Um, there was one parcel in Pierpont that we need to get back to you on. We'll do that um, later. That's, that's what you were going to say. Um, and then um, we are working also on, on providing more distinction between the different industrial um, uses. And so we're going to come back, I think, at the next meeting with that information. It's a little too soon now. We know we're talking about some areas tonight that have industrial. So what we want you to do is just express what you think should be there. And that will help us to create the, the different designations. So essentially, we're going to be getting into almost a zoning level of detail for allowed land uses for these different designations. We just need a little more time to come back to you to do that. Um, let's see. And then again, April um, 18th, we're going, to, we're going to pull everything together and come back and, and present it back to you. OK. Um, the, uh, let's see. There's a lot of resources that you all have. Um, and there are just a few more uh, today. So there is a packet. Um, which you all have at your table of the maps. Um, this is the maps that we are going to be talking about this evening. The comments that are here are what we thought was what we heard from engagement. Um, and that's what we're going to, that'll be sort of a starting point and the launching off point. For the east side, um, there's another map which you'll see at a couple spots throughout, uh, kind of in the middle of the table. Um, you all asked last time about. Um, additional places for change um, for non-residential uses on the east side. So this is a map that we produced of the non-residential uses. So we took out anything that was just residential. And so you can see what the available parcels are and what the existing land use is for those parcels. Um, we have a few extra copies here. If anyone needs them, um, just let us know. And we have a copy over at the public table as well. Um, OK, let's go to the next slide. OK. Now, we are going to continue our discussion of the east side. Um, again, the process, I'll present an overview. Um, we, um, <laughs> I, did, I didn't get distracted. Um, we're, we'll present it over here. I'm not going to do that for the east side because we've already done that. Uh, and then we'll brainstorm, talk about different, uh, different topics and different, um, you know, the different areas and then do a show of hands on each area as we go through. Um, Susan is awesome at doing this, as you saw last time of leading this. Um, you have second fiddle this evening. I apologize. I'm going to do my best to impersonate Susan um, and the great job that she does. So let's start with the east side. Um, I'm actually, we can just go to the, to the map here. Um, so we were, we were talking, 
we had some ideas. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test my own memory here of what we talked about. So we were talking about the areas in, in purple here with, with number one. Um, and we had talked, there were some ideas about whether it should be just commercial or whether it should be neighborhood center. There seemed to be a preference from the survey for neighborhood center. Um, area number two is, the, uh, is the, the agricultural areas and the survey direction was um, pointing towards, really strongly pointing towards keeping that as agriculture. And then um, area three was mixed feedback on a variety, either commercial or to have it as, um, as uh, allowing mixed use two, which is four stories, or mixed use three, which is five stories. Okay, with that, who wants to jump in? I know it's sort of hard to start right in the middle, but who wants to jump in with any thoughts they've had about the east side since the last time? Um, and and um, maybe we can, um, should, we, should we go sequentially or should we just scatter shot? How do you guys want to do it? Sequentially. Sequentially. First person to say it. Any objections? Okay, great. Let's start with um, get the decision on the shopping centers on area one. Comments, thoughts? Okay, um, and you all have microphones, so you can pass it around. The, I just want to warn everyone, the microphones are really sensitive, particularly for people who are watching. So if there's a little bit of noise, if like you guys are whispering and you're talking, it will get picked up. So let's just be conscious of that. Um, okay, Bill. Okay, so regarding the shopping center, what is the current density allowed on those? The current um, density right now is um, mixed use up to six stories. And then what would shopping center do? Shop, it, so that Neighbor, would- Neighborhood center, sorry, neighborhood center. Oh, neighborhood center? Neighborhood. Yeah. Um, it would be um, um, three or four stories, and there's some flexibility on that, on a third of the parcel, um, or a third of the area, and then the rest would be commercial. So it would really be commercial with residential as a secondary use. To, and the idea of that is to keep the commercial, but allow some infill residential. So would that downzone those properties? By yes. Going? And then again, the east side has no receiver sites. Um, it, it receiver sites as in where would the density go? Yeah. You know, I think we should think about this overall for the city and look at, at the sort of the, the ups and downs of downzoning and upzoning in different places. Um, and I, I think it's better to go for a vision rather than go area by area and try and match it for each area. Okay, but my point being that Regardless, I mean, I, I get the, the totality view. There is not a lot of receiver sites here. So we are tra essentially transferring density out of the east side. Unless it goes to area three. Unless it goes to area three, okay. Which would be more than sufficient to handle, if you, put, if you add residential, it would probably be more than sufficient to handle the increase. Okay. Okay. That's it. Uh, okay, Pete, you were next. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so currently what we have C1A and C2, they require no um, commercial in there, right, on those three sites under that zoning? They, Could it go all residential, they theoretically? They go all residential. Yeah, so um, to protect those sites, to, to still have um, commercial, because there's a lot of comments about we need a grocery store. You'd hate to see lose one of those sites, a grocery store in one of those sites. I, I'm saying a neighborhood center. Okay. Would be my choice. Okay. Pass it to the left, oh, Nick. Go ahead. Or to the right. I, guess, the I guess I would second uh, Pete's comment on those sites number two, and preferably the, the one that runs all the way up to Foothill. Um, the other three sites that are in there, number ones, they're relatively small, and there's a lot of development going on in that end of town in terms of new housing and such. And I'm just thinking maybe we reconsider those ag parcels, at least portion of one of them for neighborhood center or retail, if there can be some more uh, development in those areas. I know it says right. the directions maintain agriculture, but we need to think about yeah. long let's, term. Let's, since we said that we do this sequentially, let's hold that thought on, uh, on area two and stick with area one, resolve that, and then come to area two. I, I, one of the challenges, I think, with this conversation is that it's not just about is there housing, is there commercial, um, parking comes along with that or does it, 
uh, what does that conversation look like? And we were we had this wonderful staff put on a, a coffee on Friday morning at the shopping center at uh, Kimball and Telegraph, and I was talking to a woman who's been watching these things and observing, and she was really worried about housing coming to that neighborhood center because of all the cars and traffic, and the, how would it change that? And I and I said, you know, if families live there. They can walk to these services. They can walk to the elementary school across the street. Is there a couple of things? Can we um, limit parking? Can we limit? Is it seniors? Is it is it uh, populations that need fewer cars? And I'm just wondering how that fits into the dialogue. And then the other thing from people in the east side that I've heard is they don't have a lot of places to walk to, and there's very little uh, open space other than parkland. Can we, if a place is going to become a mixed use center, can we also require that include some public open space, even if it's a small plaza? So answering those um, sequentially, the, starting with the end, so that's the way my brain works. Um, yes, we can require some on-site public open space. If there's residential, you have to um, either you have to provide either money or space on site. Um, that's just part of the city's regulations anyway, and there can be a requirement for some on site. Um, we can put a preference for what types of residential it is, senior or, um, but we can't require that. Yeah. So we can't say it will only be senior housing. Um, we can't do that. You can put a policy that we encourage it. We can put um, incentives to encourage it even more for certain types of housing, but we can't say you can only do senior housing in this area. Um, regarding the parking, we're not gonna get into parking overall as part of the general plan. It's a zoning code. Um, overall, we're not going to put parking standards in the general plan. That will happen later, but we can put policies in. Um, the balance of if you build residential there and there's not enough parking, people are going to park in the neighborhoods. That creates its own set of tensions that we just need to be aware of. Um, and then last for the concern about will residential kind of add more trips, um, the reality is that um, that a, a, a good popular um, commercial center is always going to add more trips and have more traffic than a, a parallel amount of residential for that land. So, um, you know, we just have to keep that in mind. And again, I think the group here should think about the vision and what the needs are in the area. We could have a policy, though, for mixed use centers at shopping centers that parking is, there's a limit as to how much parking can come with the residential. We can, and we can also have uh, policies around 15-minute walk centers and things of that nature, or um, policies about incentives of parking reduction if you do these things like build a bus stop, do these improvements, uh, increase ridership, any of those things. So those can be crafted as general policies. Okay. Um, for Actually, uh, Luis, you haven't spoken. It's actually a, There's a red button on the bottom. Instructions. There's a red button on the bottom. It takes a minute to heat up. All right. <laughs> Following up on what Nick said and kind of what you said about, you know, how we, we can't dictate, you know, all senior housing, all certain type of housing, um, but then building off of, you know, what Netta said and what other people have said about these walkable, bikeable 15-minute locations and looking at the direction that the public is giving with the agricultural parcels. Um, what about policies to encourage farm worker housing? Because there is no farm worker housing in this area, yet we have agriculture. Um, yeah, there can be policies in the plan. I think these are policies that are better overall for, an, for a city um, and incentives for that rather than on specific parcels. Right, rather than say, and, and maybe that was your point of that, but yes, the general Kind of, but also regionally, you know, if we are going to preserve these agricultural parcels, yet continue with this, this, this desire to have places where people can bike to work, yep. walk to work, et cetera, then having those policies closer to where such parcels are, um, it just kind of makes sense. You wouldn't, you know, put it on the west side and expect somebody in Absolutely. 15 minutes to make it over here. Yeah. Um, before has it, Pete's going to go for for a second bite at the apple. Anyone else want their first bite? Okay. Number area one. Yeah, just real quick, just just to point out that those three locations are on transit corridors or on the main road. So um, this is kind of an issue I've got is that we haven't seen a circulation plan. We really don't know what's going to go on. That's I guess going to follow up to this. So it's hard to 
foresee what the transportation would be there. Hopefully it would be away from cars, um, but just to point out that those are on transit corridors. Good point. I just have a clarification on the City of Ventura draft land use designations. Yes. Every single one of them has a black, like a, a dark up to 2.5 stories, 30 feet, except for the neighborhood center, which doesn't have that. Okay, that's the only one that doesn't have it. So is it up to four stories, 30 feet? I'm not sure what the is on that one. I don't have it in front of me. So, Josh, is the question, what is a, a height of a four-story, or uh, what's allowed? Um, yes. <laughs> it's really what is that, what goes there at the beginning, because it's really easy to compare it that way, just to see the, the blackened part that's on every other one. Totally. We missed it on this one. So, um, Neighborhood Center is four, sto four stories, and if you compare the other four-story, like the mixed use two, that's 55 feet. And then it has a density next to it, which is the 45 dwelling units per acre. Does, does that help, Josh? Thanks, sorry about that oversight. First person to point that one out, actually. Um, okay, so we have, we have a one proposal on the table for neighborhood center, right? Um, any, uh, any other different ideas? Any different ideas for that? Okay, can, maybe we'll see a show of hands for Neighborhood Center for Area 1, for yes. Okay, that is essentially everybody. Okay, great. All right. Um, for Area 2, um, we have a couple comments over here. Who else? Let's just see a show of hands who wants to at least start a round of just comments. Area 2? Okay. This, this, okay, this half of the room is, you, you guys are gonna have to perform over here. You guys are getting outspoken. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's go actually around this way um, for whoever wants to start. Bill, I mean, Scott. This, uh, this is Scott McCarty. Um, I am in concurrence with the survey direction to maintain the, uh, the agricultural parcels as agri for agricultural use. Uh, over and above, that one of my concerns is um, not only on the east side but throughout the city is the loss of natural biomes, uh, loss of uh, soil dwellers, loss of loss loss of um, uh, greenery throughout the city. And I think uh, my my strong preference in in uh, in conjunction with those of the survey respondents is to maintain those areas as agricultural use. Great, thank you. Um, I guess I have a question specifically about that um, westernmost parcel, because at the end of our meeting last time, um, that was there was some confusion about whether or not the city owns that parcel, whether or not it is part of SOAR, or if it's already incor incorporated into the city limits. Netta, do you have the big, the, the, the western the big one? Most. Right? Yeah, the, the big one. The big one. Okay. Because I know the other part that's in pink, that's SOAR, that is SOAR protected, right? The other, the other, uh, for lack of a better description, the O that goes around the oh, other yes. number two. The O that, that goes around it is. That is I, all SOAR. Yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. Let's. So, so I would like some clarification on the designations okay. of those properties, and then I guess my my question is, if the city owns one of those parcels and it is not subject to SOAR, then are there other potential? We've talked a lot about the agricultural need for some light industry, some packing plants, to be able to keep some of those jobs in the community. Is that an area where something that is still consistent with agriculture could be considered. So I think let's, let's have Netta um, look and just get a definitive answer on SOAR or not SOAR. I think I know the answer, but I'm afraid to ask, answer it without, <laughs> I want Netta to give the real answer. So SOAR or not SOAR and whether it's in the city limits or um, sphere of influence. Okay. While you're looking that up, can we get a clarification on city. area three also? Because I've heard both ways on that and I'm confused. 
Number three. And two. How about one? I think we got that. Okay. That's asphalt. So okay, good. All right. <laughs> so uh, I just, the, I just reiterate my comments earlier on, on number two, that at least a portion of it could be um, some kind of retail, especially since there's so much growth going to be happening in that area. Okay, so we heard retail, we heard some industrial um, uh, packing, correct? Okay, just to get some of the ideas. So the current land use map in the packet um, designates, so it shows the SOAR designation. Okay, we're gonna, we're yeah. gonna double check. But we, we have it, is what I'm saying. For which one? Uh, the O. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The west side. I'm sorry. Oh, right, it's not sore. Not sore. I'm looking, I'm looking. Private. Okay, shh. Pete. Not um, I wasn't shushing you. It's everyone else. Yeah. I, I personally, for the, the one we're talking about, the number two, the larger one, and then the one on the east end on the south side of Telegraph there next to Edison property, I guess, and Sadakoy Ave, that those actually go with the... Um, like a mixed use or housing that w was proposed in the uh, one of I can't remember which one of the alternatives. And and Pete, so the the one so the one with the two on it would stay as ag is what you're saying. The one in the middle with the two. Okay. That one, one I would. With the two, and then the other one. I think the Edison is the little. Donut the Edison hole. is the white one across the street. Yeah, and then that that one, and then the other one would go with the proposals on I think number. Two on the west um, was a little denser housing down towards Telegraph and um, more single-family type, okay. two-story, three-story, or I think it's two-story towards the north. Okay. And then the uh, I can't remember what the designation was for the other one further east, but it, it was housing or mixed use. Okay. Nick. I think this is a, a, a difficult conversation. I'm generally uh, strongly in favor of the general plan policy of infill first and to leave the ag as ag. Um, parcel two, you know, has some issues. Just the fact that it's um, kind of a strange cutout from the other city form. If, from my view, if it were to get developed in some way, it, it would need to be under some very, you know, um, specific standards of expectation for the community as to what role it would play, how it would develop. Is there opportunity for community open space? I'm sure there is. Um, possibly even additional walk to commercial services that are integrated into some sort of master planned thing. And as Pete said, some kind of gradation of intensity. So okay. the other ones I think should stay ag at this point. Yes, okay. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we have a bigger discussion when we do the SOAR areas as a whole, but um, I think uh, I made a few comments at the last meeting, and, and Sabrina mentioned some things here tonight that, you know, at, at keeping agriculture is not just keeping uh, where you actually put the seeds, right? It, it, there is a whole infrastructure that's necessary to support commercially viable agriculture, which is what we have here. Um, and I'm, I'm a little concerned, you know, if the desire is to keep commercial ag in the city, but then also look at, you know, it, we're, all, we're not really looking at surrounding land uses. Um, there is guidance in the city zoning code that, um, you know, these agricultural zoned areas um, should be protected from intrusion, from non-compatible uses. So, so things like turning part of the number twos or the O or whatnot into housing, retail, et cetera, maybe introducing incompatible uses next to commercial agriculture, which is a great way to destroy your commercial agriculture. Um, the other thing to um, kind of building on, I think it was Pete, um, that said that we haven't seen a transit plan yet either. Um, some of the things that agriculture needs 
is the ability to have freight routes. There's heavy equipment that needs to be moved. There's goods that need to be moved. And I know that there is a desire to um, have complete streets, I think it's called. But if we're going to have agriculture, there must be some attention paid to keeping freight routes. Um, again, where's the nearest industrial near here where a packing plant could be? Um, so so I, I want people to kind of start thinking of ag as more than just where the plants are. It is an entire system. Um, and I'm actually hoping too that Part of the discussion that we can have and maybe part of the follow-up that can be had with the residents of Ventura is, is it commercial ag you want to preserve or is it open space you want to preserve? Because there was a mention about um, preserving biomes and, and wanting to see more of nature you know, what, what was here before and what can be supported here. Well, that's the opposite of commercial ag, actually. So, so um, I'd like to just put out there for future, because I know in the future you're going to be asking us where to dig deeper for the surveys. I think that this is a place to dig much, much deeper. Okay, and uh, just a couple really quick questions, and then we should, I wanna keep moving through this, but, um, uh, this is viable ag now, correct? Um, it's vi viable commercial ag? It is, it is currently being farmed. If you speak to the farmers that are actually farming it, it is, n it, it is an economic nightmare right now. Okay. Yeah, so just my personal opinions on this are for, of all the number two sites, the city-owned parcel, I think, um, has a potential if it goes through the Surplus Land Act and everything has great potential to be, if it's turned into a housing, it has a good potential of actually being affordable housing through that process. Um, so I'm really interested in that, that city-owned parcel, um, which is that larger one we're discussing. I think Nick's right. I know the city's moving away from having a specific plan for such small areas, but um, like I know the UC Hansen Trust site was a specific plan process that um, allowed, I guess, more clear articulation of what uses can go there. Um, and so that's something we could look at for that site. Um, if it needs to be lower density housing, this is something that hasn't been discussed much by us, but I'm curious about um, opening up some additional like mobile home uses or like tiny homes, other like low density but lower cost forms of housing um, for the area. Uh, I know if I have any chance at home ownership, I have to look at a mobile home right now and all of them are 55 plus communities. So I know there's, I guess, a market potentially for new mobile home. So in general, I think this is like a really um, ideal opportunity to look at some housing on the east side that can then support um, additional commercial and retail on the east side, um, but still in favor of not all of it has to be housing. Um, you can leave a good portion of it open space. Okay, let's keep going around. Um, we have microphones over there. So you can I? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, so I wanted to say, I think that's a very good point. Like, do people really want agriculture with the pesticides and all that, or, or are they really thinking open space? So that's, I think that's pretty important. Um, but I did want to point out that according to the, um, the survey results, far and away, everyone wants to keep the agriculture. So whether they mean they want the open space or if they want to develop it or, you know, or, or have the commercial ag, I guess that remains to be seen. But like, I think we do need to pay attention to what the people who responded to the survey said they want to keep the agriculture, whatever that means. Um, but I, I do like um, the idea maybe I, I personally had, have had um, some interactions with younger people and they, you know, like, you know, they want to be able to own a home and uh, they actually were looking into mobile homes um, and like trying to get into the RV parks or whatever and, you know, they're just too young. So um, I think that's also a valid. Just a couple quick comments is that I absolutely agree with what Louise was just talking about with um, looking at 
um, the whole, uh, agriculture in a holistic way. What, what does it take to make viable agriculture? And I think we need to consider that because while I love agriculture, I come from an agricultural family from Northern California, um, uh, we ought to make sure that we're not pricing people out of or uh, setting policy that prevents these people from actually making a living with their with their farms. So you look at um, everything from pesticides to dust to uh, 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 what we call water management to um, and you look at the location of those parcels. And I think when I think of the east side of our city, I think of underserved from a commercial standpoint. That's what I think. Um, from grocery stores, from, and I think the city center concept on those three makes sense, but those are fairly small parcels uh, compared to what those are. And I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if it's already zoned SOAR, by any decision we make here or on the general plan, it would still have to go to a vote, would it not? They're, they're not SOAR. They're not SOAR, okay. Those are my comments. So, to the long skinny one, Sabrina, that you asked about is not SOAR. It is owned by the city. Um, number three is shown on the Ventura County SOAR map, and it's right now not in city limits. And the other two smaller twos are protected by SOAR or no. No. Let me see if it's on the county SOAR map. So, so I, I do have a question of clarification because I agree when you look at the survey results, uh, the resounding uh, feedback we got was that the sore areas were to be protected, but I think there is confusion amongst the population about whether or not all of those places are sore, right? So I think when people looked at it, they said it's farmland, therefore it's sore. No, I don't want to touch sore. And, and maybe there is some nuance there that we didn't get across to the community. Uh, Perhaps. I, I would, uh, the, the challenge at, at the end of the day, regardless if it's sore or not, and I understand technically it's not in sore, is explaining to people it's immediately adjacent to sore property it's, and it's not sore. I mean, it's, it's just not going to go over well in any circumstance i mean and and you are surrounded by if you look at the two in the center the one across from edison you know all of those are three-sided agriculture you know essentially so I, I don't think anybody's thinking that that would be a great idea there and then i think one of the other challenges is if you look at the farm community off satakoy you have to do a hundred foot setback away from any existing agriculture so that's why the the farm, when you go up Satakoy, has those giant setbacks um, off the agriculture. They got those reverse homes with the backyards and the front yard type situation because of that. So, and then looking at the long skinny one, the one that's owned by the city, in regards to retail, I mean, while I, I, I'm an East Ender, I, I live on the East End, we don't have a lot of opportunities. I, I don't think we can say, let's add mid-block retail and that's gonna be viable. I mean, that's, that's not, we're, we're moving away from mid-block retail um, on it. I mean, there's, that's not at the corner of Kimball and Telephone or Telegraph or uh, Pettit and, you know, it, it's just in middle of nowhere. I mean, I don't think we're setting up a viable economic strategy to, to tenant those. So I think really, you know, and I know we're gonna do three decks, but I think that's the viable opportunity there as opposed to, the twos. Um, can I ask what you mean by we're going away from mid-block retail? I, I just, you don't see a lot of mid-block retail being built anymore. Uh, people generally want to come to a, a major intersection like the uh, Smart and Final Center where the, the one is in the top left corner. So where you have ample parking field and they can see that they know there's parking. I just don't think you see a lot of mid-block retail being designed anymore. It's, inter it's usually at intersections is where yeah. they're designed because there's more traffic. Yeah. So then the, the third green one without the number, we'll go with that name, um, that is at Satakoy and Telegraph. So that you would say that you would have retail at that location but not at the other ones that are labeled too? I'm not a retailer, uh, but I, I mean it, it it's kind of a, I don't think Satakoy is a, a major thoroughfare that people are looking for. I think you'd be more like Wells and uh, Telegraph. 
So, uh, so maybe I could move us along here quickly. If you could do quick. Well, yeah, I, Bill, I understand what you're saying about you know the general trends. I think something that, that one of our challenges is to think about where things are moving and what we'll what we want to see and what we are starting to see between now and 20 years from now. And for example, on Ventura Avenue, where historically it developed without large shopping centers, it had little markets every quarter mile, um, they're still there and they're still viable. And we just put in a quote, a 7-Eleven, which, you know, I, I, tr it was troubling, but it came out actually really good. And it's a, it's a little local market that people can walk to. It doesn't need a field of parking. If we plan for, or at least allow for that kind of thing to happen in the east side, that's a way of sort of repairing the all the big car oriented stuff so not not all retail is created equal right um so i want to actually try doing something here at, at, to help move us along so we've heard about half of the comments that were said were essentially keep um keep agriculture there support agriculture and then half were for some sort of development on some portion of it so i want to actually just start Ooh, this is tough, with a show of hands, of how many people think it should just remain as agriculture? And forget the, like all, all three of those, number twos, should just remain as agriculture without any urban uses. And then this may be an area where we actually come up with two different alternatives that moves forward. And, and that would be okay to move that into more into the process, the public discourse. Um, so let's start with a vote, because some people were very, had strong opinions. How many people think that all three of the number twos should just stay as agriculture? And by agriculture, you mean it could be open space as well. They're interchangeable or, or not? Yeah. No. 100%. No. They, this is working agriculture. They are designated as agriculture. If the property owner chooses not to build it, or not to farm it, it's still an agricultural parcel that's laying fallow. It is not open space, which is you know, natural and, okay, so with that, keep as agriculture. See, one, two. Okay, two and a half. <laughs> okay, now, okay, how many people think that on some portion of those there should be some other use? And I see a show of hands. Okay, so well, okay, keep, keep them up. <laughs> keep them up. Okay, sort of. <laughs> Oh, okay, We're, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. How much is the question, right? So, so. Also, for me, it's not just how much, but what, because I really absolutely. appreciated what yeah. um, Louise I, and Josh said about, you know, like um, ag farm worker housing or something that is related to agriculture. Yeah, I, I, yeah. so, okay. So I, what I want to do is start big and then we can kind of start to narrow down a little bit. Um, okay. Now that I did that, I'm stumped on where to go next because there were commercial, high density residential, uh, farm worker housing. Um, what, what's, what are some ideas here? Oh, I, I had, I guess, more of a clarifying question because, Bill, you mentioned the, the setback. And when you have to do setback from agriculture, could part of that be open space? So, like, if I don't you know had to rules. set back for for residential, does that naturally provide you with an opportunity to incorporate in, you know, we talked during one of the early meetings about um, a, a public open space that could go north-south, right, for bike access, for hiking to get access to the, the um, Ventura Land Trust properties, et cetera, right? So this seems like it has some opportunity to address that. Okay. I know it's a 100-foot setback from the residential to act. Okay, should we take each of these three separately, just really quickly? Yes, okay. Whew. Decision number two, <laughs> um, for area number two. All right, uh, let's start with the number two without a number on it. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, that one there. Thank you, Lily. Thoughts? Uh, I'll go for it. Um, I'll go back to the, um, what I said before, it could be mixed use with, since, and I'll go with Bill's um, suggestion, that it's on a corner. It is in an intersection. We have mixed use with some commercial 
uh, a minimum percentage of commercial and housing and also because it's on a transit corridor I think it lends itself to a little bit denser housing okay other thoughts I, I, so the the O did we figure out that's county sore right yes Okay. I'm just going to say yes. I'm pretty sure it's, it's county store. <laughs> if it is. And, and if say, it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it is. And I have to, I, I'm going to say this because um, when I looked at this before, there was a discrepancy between what was on actually the county SOAR map and what the city has in their records for SOAR. So there's some confusion about some of these parcels. This is not easy. But the, the O, the O is, is SOAR. Okay. Thanks. That, that we don't have any color on there. If I could just interject, if that's county SOAR, it should be very clear as we go through this process, if it is county SOAR. County SOAR. And I just want to remind us that county SOAR means that if it goes to a vote, the entire county votes on it. I know we've been down that road before, but... It's, it's hold on, the, the, the O, which is the space around it, yes. that's not these, is county SOAR. Yes, I know. But I think we should be thinking how can we bring that in so that we can influence the decisions that happen in the future, not the residents of the county? If it's in city SOAR, if we try and annex it, then we vote on it as a city. It's okay. our city. So let's, so that, I think we should put that as a policy, which is the county SOAR that's sort of inside of the city should, the city should have voting control over that, is what you're saying, correct? Okay. Okay, and we'll clarify all of the SOAR before the SOAR discussion. Okay, Nick. I, I think, I feel like we've got other places we can direct development and that particular piece is adjacent to ag on two sides and then Edison on another. I think we're creating more problems by developing it unless we just ultimately want to see all of that go to development over time. And personally, I'm not ready to, to do that. Okay, so we have one for mixed use, tapered mixed use, and one for leave it as ag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know we were gonna maybe hit them all individually, but I'll throw my two cents in. I think 2B and 2C leave as ag because we've discussed, like like Louise was saying, all the logistical impacts, the pesticides impacts we've also talked about as far as residents are concerned. 2A, in my opinion, is the best candidate to become something else. I really, really like the idea of it becoming like low density, affordable housing that isn't maybe technically, like affordable in the general sense, not affordable in the state sense with lots of open space. And lots of community serving uses as well. I definitely think it needs commercial as well. What is the likelihood of them actually being deed restricted affordable units built there? Like what would be the process for that? The city would continue to own the land, they would sell it to a developer, they would sell it to a low income developer. Like what, what does that mean? Um, so, the Surplus Lands Act, which is a state act, essentially says, and uh, Bill Kyler, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but that if, if it's public land that is sold privately, there's right of first refusal for, uh, for affordable housing. So it would actually go because to... First, the city would offer it, and if there was no takers and they couldn't come to it, then it goes to the state, and the state maintains a list of their developers, and it would go to their developers to affordable uh, affordable and I'm not quite sure what is it the fourth three 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 process where if another government agency wanted to come in and maintain the use I think they even get a crack at it also yeah everybody yeah <laughs> so it, it's a long <laughs> road but, but the first two are affordable housing So does the, does the land use designation of three or four or neighborhood center or any of those things make it more or less attractive to certain developer types? Or does it not matter because if they're building affordable, they can do it with any designation? Yes. Okay. So Casey had a proposal on the table. And we had, and Pete had a proposal on the table. So
sorry, one more question. Who determines the land value? Is it based on an assessment? Is it based on? Don't know. Probably assessment. Don't know. Okay. Can you restate the two proposals? So we had one proposal for 2C to be mixed, some amount of mixed use with commercial, and then a second proposal for 2C to maintain as, actually a couple said maintain as agriculture, um, and then 2B, 2A being, should be the parcel that if there is, if it's considered for urbanization, it's 2A and the other ones remain agriculture because of how they're located, so you keep a continuous, contiguous agriculture. For clarity, could we vote on each one yes. separately? Yeah, it, I was trying to, and then it got oh, okay. on, so yes. <laughs> I was just trying to repeat what's out there. Okay, so uh, we, I'm going to say there's three proposals right now. So with 2A, it's, so uh, allow for, call it affordable housing with open space, um, or keep it as agriculture. 2B, um, I've heard only keep it as agriculture, and then 2C is mixed use or agriculture. I was just going to say, okay, let's just vote on maybe 2A and... Vote on 2A. Okay. So, 2A included some commercial, I thought. 2A included some commercial. And open space. Commercial, open space, and... Do it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's a decent sized parcel. You could do some. Okay. I, I told you we missed Susan. Um, <laughs> Okay, so um, 2A. Do we have a, sorry, 2A, do we have a ballpark of how many acres it is? 87. 87 acres. 87, okay, thank you. A ballpark. Specifically. Mm -hmm. Specifically. Okay, um, okay, so let's see for 2A. One quick question. Yes. If, if we're voting on 2A and it contains commercial, could we also, would also, could that be considered as a neighborhood center? We could call it, I mean, we could designate it whatever. We, we could designate a neighborhood center, mixed use. Okay. Pete. So, if I got the, the motion correct, going yes on 2A puts 2C as, leaves 2C as agriculture. Is that correct? Nope. We can do them okay. independently. Okay. That's, I'm just, that's why I wanted to clarify. Thanks. Independently. Okay, so 2A, I want to see first a vote of hands for keep it as agriculture. One, two, three. Okay. Um, 2A, have it as a combination of residential, some mixed use slash, uh, some neighborhood center and open space. So a combination, primarily trying to focus it on affordable housing. <laughs> so, I, I want to change the zoning for that entire... Well, I think we could say half, you know, some amount of half is open space or a third is open space or, you know, a large portion of open space. Okay. Okay. Stephanie. Oh, I, was re I thought we were still voting. Oh, we're still voting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I actually Are you voting think or do you have a comment? I have a comment. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I don't like being vague, uh, but you know, it seems to me that parcel, if the East End wants to reinvent itself in it, you know, to, to something um, with you know a different character, that would be an ideal spot. What troubles me is. Just designating it mixed use, mixed use open space. I my fear is that just ends up becoming just another development. So what can we do in policy to try and you know point. Yeah. keep that in you know in the spirit of reinventing the East End? We we could also I'm just going to throw this out there, which is that it remains. Um, as agriculture for now in the plan with a policy to do a more focused planning effort on the area to achieve certain outcomes. Again, like, you know, certain uses. And so that, you know, that there's an indication that that's the way it's going to go, but we, we keep it as ag for now, and it's not until there, people see what that vision is and there's a real conversation about it that the designation gets changed. 
Well, and in the zoning code, the designation may never need to be changed depending on what's proposed there because farm worker housing, farm employee housing is allowed yep. in the agricultural designation. So it supports agriculture as a whole and can remain in an agricultural use, farm worker housing with extensive open space. Okay. This is Scott McCarty. One comment I'd like to make is, as you consider your vote, um, once the concrete is poured, it is concrete in perpetuity for that space. Okay, so, so we're, we're honing in a little bit. So it seems like two options. One is come up with designations now or in this process um, of what you want or to have a policy to do a more focused effort in this area. That's my preference. Number two. Okay, yeah. who wants, um, leave it as ag, but do a more focused effort later. Okay, who wants to just go for it now in this process and come up with specific designations? Okay, who wants to keep, go for it now and come up with specific designations or keep it as agriculture? I'm actually serious about that. Are, are you, are you, can I just clarify when you say leave it as ag, but with a policy or with a notation? To look into this. Yes, it would, okay. it would. The designation would stay as agriculture, and then we heard a couple of different, a, a bunch of different ideas that would go in as things to explore as part of a process. And so, if we voted on that, then if later, which hasn't been defined either, um, later comes around, what would be the process then that that developer or we, I think we'd have to figure that. out what that process is. We don't know yet. And, and who is we and when is that? Be the, it would be the city deciding to do that as probably an implementation action of the general plan. And let me just, there's one more thing that we can do, which is we can have this in our heads and then as we go through and look at the whole map, we can come, like in, in April, we can come back and kind of put this and put a pin in this one and say, let's come back and, and look at it again just to confirm. It's also important to remember the property owner for this parcel is the city. So it would be a, a city process that always looks like a public formal process. Okay, so I think we have, we have direction on, on 2A. Um, 2B, um, show of hands for keep it as agriculture. Okay, good. Um, 2C, um, keep it as agriculture. Most. Okay, and then I'll flip, I'll flip this, um, some sort of urban, mix, some sort of mixed use residential. One, two, one and a half. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, um, so now we're on to area three, making our way through. We're gonna have to speed up here with these. Um, so area three, it is, um, Netta said it's, it's sore, Based on the county, I actually don't think it is, but we're going to confirm this. Um, so, assuming it is not sore, I'm going to go with the assumption that it is not sore here. Um, keep it as agriculture. It, it, it is outside of the city. It is, it is in the county right now. It is a county island within the city. Um, that I'm sure of. Um, so, maintain agriculture or allow kind of mixed use, commercial, residential, um, shopping area. Thoughts? Let's see who else? Anyone? <laughs> just because I'm not shy. Go ahead. Go ahead, not shy. Um, looking through the comments for that area, there was a lot for like a regional shopping center. So the, west, the east side, there's a lot of comments about we need a grocery store, we need a grocery store. So going with that, um, grocery store, maybe a big box or um, home improvement store or something like that because it's out it isn't too far from Santa Paula, and that whole East End can use something like that. So the three alternatives you have there, I'm not sure which one would fit what I well, just we said. Could come up with a fourth, which is commercial, which okay. is what I'm hearing you say. I'm suggesting commercial. Okay. I, I think it has an opportunity to be a lot of different things, uh, particularly with the freeway access. It has an on-ramp on right there, has an off-ramp. Uh, we could draw from Santa Paula in terms of if we get the right mix of tenants there, yeah, potentially. So yeah, I think it would definitely be an opportunity for some level of mixed use there. Okay, Other, so mixed use is the next one. Next comment, Luis. 
I think that this parcel may actually already be part of the discussion um, that the city's a part of um, with a farm, worker, a farm worker housing survey or study. Um, that uh, this, uh, this parcel, um, the owner wanted to build farm worker housing some years ago, but to do so, the city would have had to have extended sewer and water service, which didn't happen. But it would be probably good to, to keep some sort of, a, a, of housing in that, e either through the mixed use or neighborhood center, et cetera, to preserve those potential discussions. OK, other thoughts? So much housing has been developed in that it's like exploded. If you, I lived at the corner of Wells and uh, 126 like five years ago, and the whole area over there was just construction, construction, just construction of new housing, and not nothing over there provides grocery. Like grocery is 100% what's needed over there. Some kind of commercial mixed use. That's like what the East End needs more than anything. Thank you. Um, the other, I think, main concern on that area is traffic. If you've ever tried to get between the 126 and um, like Los Angeles Avenue to get to the 101, it's awful any time of day. So um, I guess my concern would be increasing significantly density right in that area is only going to contribute to that cross-town traffic. Until we get the 126 interchange that isn't Victoria and isn't on Wells, um, people drive that all day long, and there are lots of trucks. OK. Nick. Um, two things. Could the current general plan addresses this parcel and talks about it being developed for some sort of commercial, I believe. I'm not certain of that. Um, Check. About 15 years ago, Fresh and Easy was ready to build a market there of about 18,000 square feet. And then they imploded, and uh, and then I think the uh, 2007 recession came into play, and all of that stopped. They were having a really hard time justifying the headcount to support even a 18,000 square foot market at that time, and that was anticipating Parkland's development coming. Um, so it is one of the challenges that we have: is they they draw a radius around a site and they count the heads. And the, the problem with this site is that half of the radius is farmland. So we just need to be aware of that. We can ask for lots of things, but there's some economic realities to that that make it challenging, maybe not impossible. And regarding Wells Road, yes, lots of traffic. I, I think we shouldn't surrender to that. I, it's, again, it's one of those roads I call a traffic sewer. It's basically designed to move a whole lot of cars and trucks from one place to another. Um, Caltrans has started to change their perspective on that, and I would love for the city to engage with Caltrans about what that means for us in those rights of way. <laughs> um, to Louise's much earlier point, um, we had a great monthly presentation, and this might be way too late, but I feel like I want to remind or ask the question again, is if we could have like one more meeting just dedicated to transportation, but like have someone from Caltrans maybe there to explain that kind of um, the difference in nuance between Caltrans ownership and how they interact with the city and what the city is responsible for. Like transportation holistically is so valuable and important in all of these conversations. And I, even though we've been, we're in year three, uh, I still don't feel confident enough that I understand how transportation is throughout these various parcels and, and areas. Another thing, uh, and I don't know how to achieve this with parcel three by itself, but the Satakoi is within the city's entire sphere of influence. Uh, and how we could use that to activate, you know, portions of Satakoi too, so that we can get people going into Satakoi, so it isn't quite the uh, 
just traffic, you know, going down. Maybe somebody can stop and shop in Satakoi or uh, do something there also. You mean you mean Satakoi, the county area of Correct. Satakoi? Correct. Yeah. But I, okay. I believe that's in the city sphere, though. It is right in the city. It is this corner here, the city. Okay. So we've heard a couple of proposals. Mixed use is, I think, mostly mixed use with a strong com commercial component, actually, is what, what I heard. Were there other thoughts? OK. Um, scale, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, one. <laughs> Scale of development. I'm just giving you guys a hard time. It's getting a, um, a neighborhood center would allow for 30 percent commercial or 30 percent residential, 70 percent commercial, give or take. Yeah, two thirds, one third is what we had in there. Then I would propose neighborhood center. Okay. So let's hear neighborhood show of hands for neighborhood center. Okay. Most. A show of hands for something else. Okay. I guess I can say my concerns with neighborhood center is just to Nick's point. Um, if if we're hearing that there's not enough density on the east side to support additional commercial, then I don't know that just 30% uh, residential is going to provide that. I would agree. Okay. Okay, so I think what we'll do with this one is let's... Um, put it as n not to, I don't want to disregard what you said, but, but neighborhood commercial, and I think let's put a caveat um, and bracket that with the comments that you made um, to, about the concern. Does that sound okay? And, I, and what I'm hearing is a balance between the two, and you don't want all residential and all commercial might not be viable. So somewhere in between there is, I think, what, what I'm hearing. That, yeah, I was going to say, can we tie it to commercial viability? You know, that, that it's not us declaring what it will be, but there's actually an economic market out there. I'd just like to say that, according to the survey results, it was mixed on whether it should be agricultural or, or um, commercial residential. Correct. So on these parcels, uh, we're just saying commercial or neighborhood center. Can we or do we need to at this point say, like, well, can we keep part of that area as a parkland or linear park or something like that to just be part of it, not just completely housing, but yeah, um, how do we restrict that? So we'll, what we'll have in the plan is that um, developments over a certain size will be required, or parcels over a certain size that develop will be required to build on-site parks for at least part of it. So that will, that will address that. Small, you know, a, a half-acre parcel, it's very difficult to put the park on-site. So that allows for off-site. But if the parcel's big enough, we'll have a policy for requiring it on-site. So again, the 2A, back to that one, if that's yeah, developed, absolutely. there's a park or there's a bike path or something? I mean, I think, I think there's, there's park in that one. There's potentially even larger amounts of open space because you're right up against open okay. space is um, a to be determined. Is a concern that if they use the state density bonus law, they're able to say one of our concessions is to get rid of the park because we, can, we, can't, we need the space in order to use it to build the affordable? I haven't heard that, actually. I don't think you can. I don't know. But I don't think you can. I've, I have not heard of that. I've heard of, of height. I've heard of, um, parking. of parking, of setbacks, step backs, lots of things. But I haven't heard we're not building any housing on site. And, and it would be, they would go higher more than they would go out. Oh, yeah, I guess one of my, like there have been projects in downtown, for example, that have gotten rid of courtyard or common area space due to the fact that they downsized it because of the affordable. Yeah, there's a difference between open space requirements for a development and a public park, right? Because development projects have impact fees that go towards the construction of public park spaces. And so we can still use that to build on-site public park spaces. So you can require a private developer to include a public park? And we can use their uh, impact fees that would, they would be paying for that park space in lieu of paying the fee they're building an on-site park and making that a public park space. There are many projects that do that. Okay, all yeah, right, I, I think we should. I, I, I need okay. to say one thing and I apologize because I should have said it about five paragraphs ago from my view. I've been contacted by the property owner about possibly working on this. I'm not under contract right now. I don't 
I don't know where that's going to go, but I just wanted everyone at this circle to know and to disclose that. Okay, thank you. Just one more thing, Matt. Um, the farm has a park on the south end of it. How was that done? Hello. Um, I don't know the specific details, but I'm ass I would assume it would be the same same way as I just discussed. But I can look into that, Pete. I have a um, uh, probably ninety percent confidence that that's how it was done. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on to college. Um, do you all want a five minute break? Yes. Okay. Wait. Don't go. Uh, at 7.23, we're starting again. Go.
One minute warning. This is your one minute warning. Okay, let's get started. Our next area. Shh. That works every time. Our next area is the college area. Thank you all for being so prompt with the, with the break. Um, let's go to the next slide. The general plan um, for this area, we'll get to a map in a second, but you all have it in front of you, um, has um, identifies opportunities for the, these suburban style areas to be transformed into um, a higher intensity mix of uses, um, create a multimodal node of housing and employment at the city's bus transfer stop, which is a little bit down and outside of this area, but still relates to this, and allow a mixture of development intensities along the entire um, corridor here. Um, there are no specific or community plans for this area, so there isn't actually a lot of guidance right now, um, and not a lot of work has really been done to, uh, after the last general plan of, of future visioning for this area. Um, so the next slide. Um, so in the survey, um, we asked about um, a few of these areas here, one and two, um, and then the Victoria Shopping Center. One is on the west side of VCC. Um, two is on the east side. Um, areas four and five that you see here outlined in black. Um, we did not ask specific questions about. Um, right now, the zoning for this area is a little bit patchwork. It's not really, there's, it's very, seems very parcel specific. Um, we, we didn't get clear direction overall in terms of um, the specific land uses for most of this area. But what we did get actually out of the, out of the process in terms of the engagement and the comments, um, one was to sort of continue to build on VCC as, as a real asset of the community and do what the city can to create more nodes of activity and activity centers so that it becomes more of a, of a, more of a college feel and more uses for, to support all of the students who were there. Um, and the other uh, comment that we heard is that there really are a lot of uses um, along this corridor that are supportive of the neighborhood, the real neighborhood serving uses. And so we want to keep that in mind with what we're thinking about, that the uses here really, there are a lot of neighborhood serving uses um, in this area. Um, give me one second. Bill. Um, so just for the feedback that we did here, um, for areas one and two, we provided a variety of different um, uses uh, and uh, land use designations, which had different levels of intensity in different areas. Um, and it was mixed on whether to maintain some of the current zoning, it maintained the current zoning in the area, or to allow a little bit more intensification of mixed use and residential only uses. Um, the Victoria Plaza Shopping Center, the existing zoning allows for six-story mixed use, um, and there was um, pretty clear direction to uh, change that to the neighborhood center designation. Um, and then areas four and five were um, the direction that we heard through the engagement process was really to maintain existing designations or to allow mixed use, which would allow those existing uses to continue on in the future. Um, so that's the, the feedback. Questions first, Bill? Uh, who has jurisdiction over the college? College. So it's its own entity? I believe so. Netta? Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. And then they're proposing housing, and that's that's their thing. Yes. They're proposing housing on their on the campus, and, in the big blue area. Right. And the city has that's no just. Okay, other questions? About the neighborhood center use that we were well, talking about? So, uh, so just questions overall with this, and then, um, you, know, the, you know, the way we started before, and, I, and I'd like to figure out if we can kind of get through a few of these areas this evening. Um, and so maybe just start out first with just overall, when you think about this area, what should the vision be here? Like, how do we want to sort of verbalize that? And then what does that mean for land use designations? So maybe we'll start with vision. Nick. I would ask, can the city engage with the community college to talk about their intentions? And maybe, not, if I understand it right now, they're talking about some housing on the old um, natatorium or the, the swimming pool area. Um, yes. Is there potential to talk to them about other ways? They have huge, vast amounts of parking. Are there other ways that the property could evolve to fit into the community in a, in a different way? with some of that additional housing. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that there are ways of engaging with them. Um, I think it doesn't necessarily change what can happen around it, um, which is the kind of the town gown type of situation in a little bit smaller context here. Okay, thoughts on vision? Popcorn style, anyone? Scott. Much better uh, road surfaces needed for cyclists in the whole area. Okay. So um, one of the things that you know, the school district and the community college uh, meet on a regular basis, and one of the things that um, has come up repeatedly in those conversations is that there are a lot of students who are experiencing homelessness while they attend the community college because it's just very, very expensive as a community college student to live in the area. That's part of their motivation for creating student housing on campus, but I think, you know, as a community, it benefits us to have those students live as close to the college as possible for transportation reasons and also because it really uh, reinvigorates that neighborhood. So when I look at one, right, the area that's designated one, um, although there is a, a commercial space there, I do think it's a great place to add some increased density for student housing in a kind of studio model or you know the like a, uh, apartments that students could afford because then they don't have to drive and we could maybe re you know encourage the community college to look again at some of that parking okay other thoughts i think that's a good idea i see some nodding heads i think the vision is how do we support the college and make it more viable you know, in, in well, I don't know if viable is right. It's, it's it's very viable. It's how do we focus on its mission and making that the, the focus of that area in, in terms of it. Like, I know the area that's the where, practically where the two is. That's been on the market multiple times in terms of uh, for, for potential for housing. The area across the street where there's, I believe, it's a synagogue now. It's in red. There's a vacant lot there. I mean, those are all housing opportunity sites, you know, to support the uh, uh, the student housing, you know, potentially uh, right. on it. I think if you look at the corner of Day and Telegraph, the uh, that has developed nicely into some student serving Shh. areas. Could we please not have side conversations in the back? Thanks. In terms of you've got the Starbucks, the uh, Jersey Mike's, the, uh, you know, so it's kind of becoming that serving area, idea, and I think it's tying into Foothill a little bit too there. So one of the reasons I, I started the conversation on number one is because the, uh, number two is um, there are single family homes right behind that that are mostly single story, um, like ranch homes, and, they're, and that property um, where the Starbucks is in, in the purple, um, the property adjacent to that that's burgundy, um, it, access in and out is is really tricky um, so from my, you know like having spent many years dropping my kid off at foothill um, I really think the the end the west end of the college is the place where you can add density without dramatically impacting neighboring communities 
Okay, so I guess we're starting with area one. That's it. It's just fine. Yeah. I would also say just in general that corridor, um, because it is that this the college is really the center of that. It should be looked at for bikeability, walkability, um, and and hopefully to attract either businesses or restaurants or retail that would. Um, be potential job opportunities for college students and um, just different, I think just to improve the accessibility, walkability. And, and I want Stephanie to be proud of me. So we really got to break the transportation, the buses, how do we get, I mean, so that everybody can get there. I mean, it's one of the places where everybody needs to get to. Okay. I also think um, people, you know, when they are in colleges and what maybe attracts people to a certain college or a certain area or the other, um, lifestyle options that those areas have. So yes, housing is important, but having cool restaurants and bars and social activities, I think is also really important in that area. And At least that's how I chose and, my college. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's how a lot of, but that's how a lot of people, I mean, it's, you know, right now it's more of a suburban campus, um, a commuter campus, and it can transform into something else, which is sort of what I hear, what they're, I believe, starting to do. and. Um, and it sounds like the direction. Now, um, Kelsey, were you talking just area one or were you talking just generally? I guess it would be area one, but then bleeding into area four. So maybe increasing a little bit more of housing options in area one, but making sure that area four, if I'm looking at those colors correctly, seem to be more commercial uses are able to have those things available. More, more fun things to go to. Okay, other thoughts? I'm proud of you, Bill. Um, yeah, I mean, it's called the college area, so I think 100% it should cater to the college students who are there, whether um, that be prior, I mean, especially that it should prioritize student housing. And I don't know why I feel the need to say this, but I love Foster's Freeze. I think it's iconic. And so if we could just make sure that that stays, uh, put that in the notes. Everyone deserves cheap ice cream. after party there tonight. Um, okay, um, let's see. Now, what about scale of development? Building heights. I'll say something controversial. If there's anywhere we're gonna do mixed use for, one feels like a good candidate for that, and I would actually advocate for going all the way up to six stories in one, and then exploring converting four to mixed use, but at a at lower heights, maybe like two, mixed use two. Okay, other thoughts? Um, we have a couple, let's see. Um, let's go Nick and then Pete. Well, I have to agree, I think um, there could be uh, higher level uh, university housing you know, that, that is within the city. Mm -hmm. So I'd be in favor of five stories plus. Okay. And, and but in a limited way, of course, but, but uh, w with the intent that it could be student housing. Okay. And can I, can I ask a quick clarifying question? Because we're talking about Area 1. Area 1 is also goes on to the south side of the street. Are we just talking the north side for now? I just want to make sure because there are single family homes on the other side, on the south side. Yeah, I will say that I think it makes sense to sort of focus um, height on the north side where it's directly adjacent to the college, if we're talking about like walkability specifically, crossing telegraphs not always easy. So, okay, putting as much as we can directly near the campus makes sense to me. You're talking okay. about the north side of Ashwood, right? Mm -hmm. What's that? You're talking about the north side of Ashwood, right? North side on Ashwood. I'm on on Ashwood, on Ashwood north side east of side. Telegraph. I'm sorry, east side of Ashwood. East yeah. side of Ashwood. Yes. North yeah. of Telegraph. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was something I was going to bring up was uh, like we talked about in the last meeting about respect your neighbors. You know, there's a lot of there are single family homes, neighborhoods around there, especially in uh, just above where number four is. Um, there are some apartments back there already. And I know behind the liquor store, there's uh, some vacant land, but there are single family homes. And then on the south side, I was going to say uh, south side of one. Um, or the south side of Telegraph, east of Ashwood. Same thing, you got single family homes in there. 
Yeah, and that's why that's why I asked that question. Yeah. Okay, so this is I'm kind of blown away actually that someone's saying six stories on one. Um, it's interesting. Student housing, I think you know, could make some sense. It, believe it or not, it scares me right there. Um, but I want to say again, I think this is a really unique opportunity for the city and the college to engage with each other to create a plan for that area. That's really unique, and they are just now going out for an RFP to figure out, you know, what exactly to, you know, how to how to implement that. So th we're, there's a window here that we could really engage and do something pretty cool at that end. So I think we, we got to grab that. Okay. And one more one more disclosure on that um, <laughs> piece of orange that pops down south. Uh, that one. We're working on it right now for affordable housing. It's a church. Okay. And it's only maximum three stories, <laughs> stepping down to two. Okay. I won't give away any secrets, but thank you for disclosing. Um, other thoughts on the area? Well, um, the, I, I still love the concept of the 15 minute city, so the 15 minute college town, or maybe even, and, and the greater density makes sense just because they would be walking more and then you and then give them more cool fun places to walk to uh, the impact you know it may reduce some of the community commuter students and uh, even reduce some of the impact um, of traffic and maybe that's really uh, um, optimistic but it strikes me as a possibility yeah okay I want to echo what Nick said I think six stories would be it's like almost moving the Earl Stanley Gardner building into Midtown or the college area. I think it, the scale is a little, a little too aggressive. Um, I just, can I, can can I just, I, sorry, I just, go wanted, ahead. because that, um, isn't the townhouse six stories at least, which is on the other side, right? The, so I, I was just gonna say the same thing. That, that's a very good point, but it's got a real big setback, doesn't yeah. it? No, I agree. So I think that, but but it, in terms of height, that's why I, to, yeah. even though six stories- You're absolutely kind of like right, but from five miles eyebrows. away, Cape Canaveral looks this big. Yeah. Oh, that's good yeah. I, I drove by there again today, and I was again, I'm like, wait, there's like a seven story building here. Yeah. You almost don't notice it, but it's, it's set way back. Um, okay, so I'm hearing, I'm hearing some, some trepidation about six stories, but maybe five, okay. Um, maybe I'll just, I'll just throw this out here just to keep this moving. So it seems like area one, if it was mixed use three, which is five stories, um, the south side of Telegraph um, is a lower um, mixed use of mixed use two, one or two, so three or four stories. And then potentially the same thing moving east on Telegraph, um, or leave those as commercial. Just I'm trying to I'm trying to pare back all of what I'm hearing quickly. Just Pete? quick question, Matt. Um, if you're going to say, uh, or can we designate that as student housing or something, or more affordable housing? That's the problem. I'm I'm thinking. Okay, you go five, six stories. What's to say they're not going to be uh, thirty-five hundred dollar three-bedroom apartments? We can't designate it as a certain kind of house. I'll also say, though, as a college student, like, there's nothing to say that you don't pack seven girls into a three-bedroom. Like, they'll make it work if it's nearby. So and, I think there's some flexibility sort of built in with the lifestyle there. In, in fact, just you all know I'm from Berkeley, and, and there's a lot of new housing being built in Berkeley, and it's very expensive, but what they're doing is they're actually designing it differently so the bedrooms are bigger and the common areas are smaller so that people can share rooms. So it's just a different model of doing that. Um, it's expensive, but it's working for actually for the students. Can I ask about the, the southern part of um, Area 1? Um, is it possible to do that mixed use one, which would be lower again because the neighboring houses are single family homes. And then if someone, like the project that Nick was talking about, is if they're doing um, low income housing, they're gonna get the bump anyway, right? So they would be able to increase density, um, but it encourages people to be thoughtful about the neighborhood that's adjacent, which is single family homes. So I'm hearing, it, and it, a slight modification of mixed use one on the south side of area one and mixed use three on the north side. Okay, can, can we do a quick vote on that? 
So mixed use three on the north side, mixed use one on the south side. Show of hands for yes. Okay, good. Pretty much everyone. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to go. We're on a roll, so I'm going to. I'm going to switch us maybe to another one, which is the Victoria Plaza Shopping Center. Quickly, which is the shopping center there. Mm -hmm. Number three. Number number three. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, area number three. Which, again, it was six-story mixed-use um, neighborhood center is what the. I mean, the reality is that's where the entire east side shops. So, so whatever we do, it has to preserve the. Every single Lena kid shows up. Uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And the Balboa kids and. and yeah. <laughs> I mean, it could also be that that um, it actually goes to um, commercial with no residential around. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Is there any residential on that parcel right now? No. I've got a little bit of history on that site. 20 years ago, we rent, did a renovation of it. Um, there, it's complex. There's a lot of lease lines. It's not, there's a large property owner, but a lot of long-term leases. So it's not something that would happen quickly and easily. Um, it is right now kind of the, the, the watering hole for groceries and stuff for the, that entire area. But again, I guess I want to encourage us to think about how things are evolving because they're changing faster than we might recognize. Um, so when we say 30% versus 70%, you know, 70% commercial and 30% residential, that's assuming the old model where we're bringing, you know, two cars for every apartment along with us, and um, and we're thinking two-dimensional. When we're talking three dimensions, we're getting multiple uses out of that piece of land. And so just being open to possibilities of change, I think, uh, make a lot of sense. So, okay. um. I, I guess my, my concern when we talk about the cars and whether or not we're getting away from them, I mean, how many people drove here or needed to drive here? And if you lived near that area, there's no way you'd make it to City Hall. And, and I don't think realistically everyone's going to start taking the bus because people do work and we are more sprawled out here in California, so I don't want to be overly optimistic in what will be uh, what will occur in the next 30 years in terms of people's car habits. Matt, um, yeah, I, I had that concern too, and I'm thinking, but I'm wondering how much of the traffic actually comes from the college and Buena. If you were to take that traffic away, would it be near as bad as what we see most of the time over there? And then if it's neighborhood center and there is some uh, residential on there, then you're making a walkable neighborhood where somebody doesn't have to drive to the grocery store, they can just walk across the parking lot. Okay, if you look at the satellite of this area, like a good 50, 60% of it is just wasted on mostly empty parking lots, parking spaces. Used and for. You, yeah. <laughs> You, yeah, exactly. So I, it's just a waste. Of, that land is incredibly valuable. It is way too valuable to be used for that. Make a parking structure on the left-hand side, do something, put it underground. There's ways to accommodate folks with cars, to, but not use that entire land space for mostly unoccupied parking spaces. So whether we do something else with it, something should be done that isn't that. Okay, so can I get a proposal from someone on what should happen there based on the conversation we've just had? Neighborhood center. Okay, so a show of hands to support neighborhood center. Okay, um, a show of hands for something else. Okay, and? Commercial, Commercial only? Okay. You, you, uh, until we have a viable alternative, you're afraid of losing the... The one store we have. Okay. And um, does that change anyone's vote? Okay. I just, question. I thought commercial meant that they could develop, like, residential... Distance. Commercial, so the com if, it's com if we change it to commercial in the proposed... Land, draft land use designations, it is just commercial with no residential. Because currently it can go to six stories with residential. 
But Correct. state laws do allow you to do by right conversion of commercial to residential if you have an affordable component. Yeah, 100% affordable, yeah. The state keeps switching things on us. Well, I, yeah, the ground floor has to be commercial. At this point, there is, again, my, my concern is that there's no viable shopping this, this is the viable shopping center. I mean, this is like, I think most East Enders do the calculus of like, I could go to Smart and Final, maybe they have what I need, or I just go to Vaughn's because I know they have it. You know, I'd rather go to Smart and Final because it's closer, but if I, they don't have it, then I've got to go to Vaughn's anyway, so I might as well just go to Vaughn's. I, so I, 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 I guess I'm not clear on something then, because I kind of am assuming with Neighborhood Center, if it's two thirds, one third, two thirds being commercial, one third being residential, you're almost more protected in terms of preserving commercial uses than you would be otherwise. Otherwise being the existing designation. Sure, or, or a full commercial designation. Or, or I, I feel like it just, it, it gives people the ability to build some residential while ensuring that the commercial is also preserved. Again, the, the vision of the designation is what you just said, which is, try and preserve the commercial while allowing for a little bit of residential. That, that's the vision for it. The other is try to keep it all as commercial. And I think the reality is, given the parcelization, it's gonna be difficult to build, to take the whole thing and make it residential. So if there's a desire for some residential, this is probably the opportunity. So this would probably make the property owner miserable, but um, the parcels are cut out of the Vons, so can we keep the Vons commercial and the rest neighborhood center? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd rather do a restriction of ground floor has to be commercial. Yeah. Okay. And then you allow upper floors to be residential versus just, you know, eight lots parcels should be commercial. Yeah, we get into spot, spot zoning with that. I mean, given how can, can, my, can we use microphones? Is. Sorry. Can we use the microphone? This, this I is can't imagine so. that the supermarket, you know, being such a hub and so profitable would ever go away. Um, but I think that maybe opening the possibility that perhaps you just add some housing on top, like, why not? You know? I think my concern is, like, right now we're looking at the consolidation of Kroger and Safeway, which are essentially Ralph's and Vaughn's. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they're going to start doing consolidation math um, on it. And you know, in my opinion, if that merger is allowed to go through, the Vons on Victoria and uh, Telephone will probably go. Mm. So, because they're not going to have one in between the Ralphs on at Montavo Hill and the the one at uh, Victoria. So, I just want to make sure we're incentivizing yeah, that I, grocery. I, I th thing. So, I think we're not going to yeah. be able to predict obviously what what's going to happen so i mean i guess to maybe go back it, it seemed like the neighborhood center was really the the direction i think we can we can what i'm also hearing is from everyone is the the desire to keep a lot of commercial in this area regardless of how that happens okay yeah it just going on your point it just um if that's as busy and popular as as bill is saying i can't imagine a property owner right. getting rid of it, or Vaughn's wanting to move out. And especially because they've had the opportunity to do six-story mixed use at this point, and nothing's happened. Yeah. Okay, um, let's, let's move on to area two. So the um, east side of Ventura Community College. Um, there is more in the in the base of existing single family, including um, of, of single family, including right along Telegraph, and then on the north side. Um, okay. Yeah. Pete. Um. So I guess there there's one entitled and one proposed develop housing development there already down south end of Day Road is the Tides and that's entitled. Uh, just to the left of that, the orange or the yellow one, yeah, right there. And then there's a new proposed three-story, I can't remember how many units, up on Day Road, just above the purple. Um, and that's currently, I believe it's all R1. But again, I, I look at um, Wake Forest and Tiloma there, that again, it's, it's surrounded by single-family homes and just anything we do 
we got to remember those are single family homes and don't want to be towering over them. So it seems like there actually look like just a few single family homes in that area. Um, because north. No, there, there's all up Bryn Mawr and all up Taloma are all single family homes where that one arrow is coming almost straight down to it. Yeah, no, no, that, well, that's the area where there's single family homes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the other, the other area where the actual number two is. Is multifamily, right? Um, I'm not sure what's back there. That's kind of hidden. That's like. It's an old nursery. Well, foothills north of that, but yeah, there's a little neighborhood with. I think it's an homes old nursery. Back there. I think there's an old nursery back there. Okay. So thoughts on this area? Proposed ideas. Aaron. I think the what like what they have going on over there is is probably perfect for that specific spot. It's right by Foothill High School. It's right by the college. You got a lot of the college students and the and the high school students commingling like at the corner of that, that Starbucks and you know frequenting the little uh, food shops over there and they're gonna put the Planet Fitness in um, so I think the area just above Telegraph is is pretty much perfect maybe just add yeah like some multi-family or you know kind of yeah, slightly more dense housing somehow in there um, is good, but mostly I think it's the way that it is zoned right now seems perfect for that spot. Okay, great. Other thoughts? Um, I, just looking at it on Google Earth right now, it's very low density, a lot of trees and land and parking and uh, the old Norrin's store, which is uh, Maverick's gym. Uh, I think over time it should evolve into something more dense. Not, I wouldn't say six stories, five stories, but I would say a mixed use with three stories or four stories. Just, you know, again, college related. Um, I think it's going to evolve. And which area are you talking about for exa so which parcel about specifically? The entire two area. Okay. So, so uh, you're north saying. North of, of uh, Telegraph. South is a slightly different animal. Are you on? Okay, so you're saying north of Telegraph, mixed use, um, three stories not, or not four Mar, stories, I'm which sorry. is one or two. I'm talking about the day road portion of it, not the Bryn Mawr portion. Although the Bryn Mawr portion includes a church and a parking lot, and church viability is, you know, not okay. real certain these days. All right, other thoughts? So we have one for keep it the same, one for increase. It, isn't it currently zoned? The purple is zoned for mixed use. Three stories mixed use. Correct. The yellow is neighborhood low, so two stories. Essentially, it's single family homes. Single family homes, two. Yeah. yeah. And then the per, the dark purple is mixed use three, so five stories. The dark purple, I believe, is mixed use four, which is six stories. Okay. So so I don't. It's like it, a magenta. Sorry. Yeah. It look. It doesn't look like dark purple. It looked on. The printout here looks like it's a like mixed use three. Give us a minute. We'll look. We'll look at that. So it kind of sounds like Nick, and like you're saying the same thing in terms of like leaving it would be not really increasing the densities, or maybe by one story in the light purple area. And and then what happens in the single? We're at single family now. I think is the question. Who owns the Baranka? God. Is it, or is it private Who owns the Barranca is the question. I don't know. Who owns okay. The Sabrina. I'm not here to answer the Barranca question. Um, I, I didn't think so. You have to answer it. Answer the Barranca question. That, you can just say, I don't know, and then answer, <laughs> say what you want to say. I have no idea. Um, uh, the yellow area above the lavender between sort of, uh, you know, Telegraph and Foothill School, um, I guess, with the exception of the back of that lot, which does um, abut single family homes, towards, towards Day Road to me, it's one of the places you could increase density because with the elevation gain that you get all through the school, you wouldn't be impacting views or any of the neighborhood that is above Loma Vista with three stories or even potentially four stories. Again, with the, with the caveat that at the back of that lot, you have single family homes, so you would want to make sure that you yep. were 
we talked about the, the tapering policy for the whole plan for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, so the number two area to me, well, actually, it's, I was going to say it's two areas, but actually it's three. Um, so you have the number two on Day Road, and this is like maybe an ABC also. Then you have the number two on Taloma, Bryn Mawr, which is east of that, north of Telegraph, and then you have the the number two south of Telegraph. Right. Do you have them? No. Where's the cursor? This is one, two, and three. Okay. So what I would say right there, 2A, I would say, I would suggest three-story multifamily, and maybe if you need to taper it into single, single family. Um, and then the Bryn Mawr properties to that, Bryn Mawr to Loma, which would be 2B. Um, I think you'd almost do the same thing. You could almost go four stories along Telegraph as long as you taper it down to where it runs into the single family homes. But then that property on Taloma might be too tall for that. Lily, switch the A and the B. Yeah, okay. it's almost, I almost so, have like so a 2B-1. Three, three story multifamily, <laughs> where, uh, where the single family is, uh, move it up to three story multifamily, tapering down, 2B, what did you say again for 2B? Yeah, well, I, I kind of changed my mind in the middle of my oh. talk there. Um, I could see three story, but again, it's got a taper because that, especially the one on Taloma, that is right across the street from single family homes, right where that arrow points. And then just north of that is single family homes. So you've got to be conscious of that. And then 2C is already entitled for a three story on one of those two properties. And then you've got the shopping, little shopping center in there with Snapper Jacks and Subway. And that seems like places where the college kids go to eat. So leave that the way it is, and then allow three-story multifamily on the south side with the two, where the two yellow parcels are, because that's the way they're going anyway. Okay. Other thoughts? Any agreement, disagreement? So my thoughts with 2B, um, and it goes back to something I said at the last meeting, all of those neighborhood low parcels in 2B are owned by churches. And so um, churches tend to be good partners for affordable housing. So I'd like to see some additional density permitted there. But yeah, I, I think we need to, on 2B specifically, not that I'm trying to table anything, but until we understand the Barranca and what the county is going to require, setbacks, I'm not sure those are viable parcels in terms of with the uh, what development would be allowed under the county. Okay. Aaron? Maybe 2B should be kind of multifamily, not, not like crazy high stories or anything, but just kind of multiple family, so it kind of fits in with the rest of with the neighbors. Um, and then 2A and 2C, I could, I think for sure, they could go two to three stories at least. Okay. Right? So Okay. So, Stephanie, I think you got several of us looking at Google Earth. Um, and uh, the yellow part in 2A is there are a lot of trees in there, and it looks really, and, and just the idea of taking out trees. So, you know, single family homes and trees, and so I don't know. I just wanted to say it's really pretty back there, and tree, you know, sorry. Um, babbling a little bit now. I'll stop. <laughs> okay, so it seems to be a little, so 2A, it seems to be a little bit of a, of a difference of opinion um, of keep it the way it is versus um, increase to three-story multifamily, and is it three-story, Pete, was it three-story mixed use on the court or a four-story mixed use? On 2A or B? 2A. Uh, three for me. Okay. So three-story mixed use on the corridor, three-story multifamily behind, or just leave it at single family behind are the things that I've heard. Am I missing anything? Okay. So does that sound okay to everyone? Or do I hear different ideas? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. So, yes. Yes. Oh, a vote. So, um, <laughs> 2A, 
essentially, it's just changing the, the yellow, which is single family, to three story uh, multifamily. That's, the, that's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. So, sh show of hands for yes. Okay, show of hands for no. Okay, so one and a half for no. Okay, um, 2B, it sounds like leave it the way it is until we know the Barranca or increase it to three-story um, multifamily. Those are the two options. Who wants to leave it the way it is for right now? Show of hands. Who wants to do three-story multifamily? Oh boy, that's split. <laughs> half and half. Okay. Um, it's close. Okay, so let's, let's put a pin in that one. I think we'll do a little research on the Barranca and, step, and setbacks to see what, what's residual there. Um, Quick question, and Matt. We'll come back for that. I'm sorry, you're not allowed to blurt out like that. Thank you. Um, okay. Okay, so 2C. Um, what were the thoughts on 2C? So one for leave as is, although I heard leave as is, but also didn't you say also three story where the yellow is because it's uh, entitled? Yeah, I apologize because it's showing as R1 single family and there's already a three story entitled there. Got it. Okay. So essentially normalized to what it is, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So that would be three story multifamily or even there. mixed use one. Okay. Um, can we get a vote on that one? So for what Pete said. Yeah. <laughs> Three-story multifamily, since you leave it there. <laughs> Whatever Pete said. Okay, how many people disagree? This mixed-use one or multifamily three-story? Yeah, okay. it's essentially yeah, the same height. Yeah. One allows some commercial, the other doesn't. Okay, so that was everybody. Okay, um, now areas four and five. Mm -hmm. Who wants to start? Not Pete. Yes. The, the area that's cut out of four above Telegraph, that's a, a mobile home park. That's a mobile home park, which is why it's cut out. So where the five is, I'll start with. Yes. Is that owned by the federal government? Um, I'm not sure who that's owned by. Yeah. Oh, the blue post five. office. I believe that's owned by the feds. So, so I don't think that's. Leave that the way it is. Yeah, I don't think that's going. <laughs> I don't think that's going anywhere. And I think those businesses seem to be pretty viable, in my opinion. I mean, it, it, yeah, that, that office, that's a kind of a medical-ish office space that seems pretty viable. So I would say leave it alone. OK, any, um, any objections to leaving that alone? OK, show of hands for leave it alone. Keep five as is. OK, that is everybody, unless I miss someone. Did everyone raise their hand? Yes, okay. Um, area four. For clarification, the retail, uh, uh, we've talked to now about you know, supporting the college through housing, um, through, through shops, places to eat, et cetera. We, uh, uh, one thing that uh, we haven't talked about, and I'm asking if retail would support this, is entertainment. Because if you don't want a bunch of cars, and, and you would like to provide the students with a complete neighborhood, you have to provide some entertainment as well. Yeah, and I think entertainment is, would be an allowed use within okay. the commercial. Commercial, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you say retail, that's commercial? Yeah, the is commercial is okay. Okay. retail, entertainment, services. Okay, area four. So area four is within the dotted line? Area four is in the black dotted line disappeared for a second. Area 4 is in the black dotted line and you could potentially look at it as what's going on along Telegraph and then um, north of on north of Telegraph along Ashwood, the west side of Ashwood. So this is just a minor point but we talked about spot zoning before. The one parcel that seems to be split into multifamily and commercial, what, what is there and should we unify it? I, who has, who has Google Earth? The, okay, I can, because I looked at this. Um, so the brown on the left side of this 
squiggly line, that is apartments currently, two-story apartments. On the right side is the, um, and anybody correct me if I'm wrong, is the liquor store, there's a dentist office, A&W used to be there when I was a kid, it's not there anymore. There's a donut shop and then there's uh, actually like an old dilapidated avocado orchard behind there. So it is, those are actually that it, it looks it looks bizarre, but apparently those are the parcel lines. You forgot the ice vendor. <laughs> so, question: the um, kind of uh, tan color that's to the uh, west of um, Ashwood. Mm -hmm. What is? Uh, those are apartments, I think, that are there right now. Two story. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Again, with an apartment, it's unlikely it would go anywhere. So is it leave it the way it is? I think so. I, I'm just thinking there's two lots there, the kind of the orangish right of the squiggly line, that one, and then to the, no, that's a Denny's now, so, and then that one, that's an office building, I don't know, or a, no, it's, I don't know if it's office or just kind of retail. It's a strip yeah, mall. Yeah, two-story mixed use. Two -story strip mall. So I'm, I'm thinking those two properties could be looked at. Okay, and if, if they are looked at, what should they be looked at for? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> you have the microphone. And Pete, Go ahead. can you also include the one that's to the left of Denny's that's open? Oh, that's Big Wave Dave's. This is, this is Denny's, right? Okay, yeah, that's, and then this one. that's a vacant lot. Mm. And I know that they've been approached by the College Area Community Council for put housing there, and they're, they're not receptive to it. So um, I don't know if you want to redesignate that land use as maybe a mixed-use one or a, with a school there or a three-story multifamily or something like that. So it seems... It seems the options, it could be just to leave it as commercial. They also, for consistency, the rest is mixed use. You could also move them to mixed use. And it could be mixed use one, which is three stories, or you know, mixed use two at four stories. Question, Matt? Or, or whatever. So the uh, mixed use, does that set a, that doesn't set a percentage amount of commercial that has to be there. Correct. So it could be a veneer of commercial, it, corner could, serving commercial. It could also be no commercial. It could, could be, be all no residential, okay. unless we specifically dictate that there should be some commercial. Okay. I would again caution against converting everything into housing, especially if you're trying to make this a community where people want to live, work, and I mean like when you think of a college community, it's generally like people live in that area in an ideal situation. They're not driving downtown necessarily to go to the bars, they have like a college experience around the college. So if you get rid of the ability to build those spaces, then we'll just be left with, you know, people driving or unsafely potentially to go elsewhere. Okay, so that's one for keep it as just the way it is, and then another was mixed use one. Well. Was that what you were saying, Kelsey, is keep it as it is, or were you saying there's a better designation for that? I'm saying leave it as commercial. Okay, why don't we do a vote for... Go ahead. The, we were, talk, we're talking about the two red, the Denny's and the... Well, I think all... The one next to it. All the red here. I, yes, all the red. But that's what you're talking about, right? Okay, anyone agree with the commercial? Okay. We need to talk to you after. All right, so um, let's do a vote for just keep it as, as, keep it the way it is with commercial. Show of hands. Okay, almost everyone show of hands for turn it to mixed use one. Okay. All right. We're through this area. Another area. All right. Now. Everybody okay to keep going? Johnson. Um, 
general plan has it to um, leverage the location next to the Metrolink station, establish a strategic mix of uses, strengthen the area's economic presence, make it a visual gateway, encourage high quality mixed use developments. Um, there are no specific plans or community plans for this area, although one thing that came up multiple times in the process was to create a specific plan for this area. So that will potentially most likely be um, an action in the plan is to do a specific plan for this area. Um, so what we heard from um, in the survey, uh, we were using the base here as the, as the starting point. Um, for the area along Johnson Drive, there was mixed feedback on um, maintaining um, current zoning, increasing to mixed use three and four, and then just making it neighborhood center. Um, some of these parcels, this, the parcels that are, are purple, are, some of them are under construction, um, and then some of them, are, the zoning is already getting changed because of the housing element. This is one of the few areas where the, the zoning is getting changed because of the housing element. Um, so it is, the purple is already what's happening either right now being built or part of, um, part of the housing element. Um, areas two and three here, um, there was a lot of comments about maintain, I mean, we asked what the uses should be here and it's maintain, have industrial, have commercial, and have housing. Um, so it really was a lot of mixed ideas for this area. Um, area four, there was really no significant input um, except focus on clean employment uses. Okay, so with that, um, I just, you know, there were, there's a, we went through a couple of concepts with this and, and I, I, I was, we were thinking that area one, um, you know, that the way it's done is, is a little bit different than area two and area three as that triangle um, is essentially a little bit unique. We put two and three together, but I don't think we have to talk about them together. Um, who, who wants to start with this area? I'd actually like to propose adding an area five okay. to this. To the east of the, where, where you fade out the color. Um, GPAC has received twice now public comment from the um, representatives of uh, the, uh, the Hegis about that property. Um, and they have a proposal that um, it would be mixed use with a lot of open space, would provide for a connection, uh, bicycle paths, et cetera, um, from this, the, the proposed Johnson housing to the housing development to the east of this, and would also possibly open up um, access to city residents to the river. Um, so I'd like to propose that uh, we add that to the discussion, and since that's the landowner's desire. Okay, so since we don't have that information, if we could come back. It, it actually was submitted as public comment for tonight's meeting. I understand, but, but I think since we don't have it up there, I, I think maybe to give people time to digest it, I'm just saying let's come back to it at either at the next meeting or um, just so we can really focus on that. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, and is the is the area outside of the city? It's in the sphere of influence. Right? It it it, I believe outside so. I mean, there are many steps that would have to happen, but since it is a proposal, and the proposal actually happens to meet all of the community feedback on page twenty two of the summary there, and right. it kind of hits everything. I think it's worth discussing. Okay. Yeah. Let's um. Let's add that if we could, um, to later. Okay. Uh, I, I just, Matt, I have a real quick question. Is that, and maybe Nada can find this out, is that SOAR property? Yes. Yes. It is SOAR property. <laughs> okay. So thoughts, thoughts on the, the whole Johnson corridor area. Okay. I have a clarifying question, because yes. going back to public comment, one of the other public comments was about the Olivas Park and Johnson Drive improvements, and is there any context, anything we need to know about how that might affect the area we're looking at? So it's in the Olivas Park specific plan and the development agreement for its connection, so it's going to get built out at some time 
to connect, if that helps in the discussion of what land uses do we put and if, is there a connection there? Yeah, Kyler, do you want to elaborate and then we can show it? Um, well, it's I not on this map. I don't map, know too so. much about it, so that's why I was asking for clarification. Um, is it was just a comment that we should be made aware of a new interchange and connection of Olivas Park Drive and Johnson Drive freeway access. So I guess my my bigger question was when we've talked about this area, we've talked a lot about the need for capital improvements to improve freeway access and everything. So does that plan address that already or provide any sort of? So there's the Olivas Park, do you, are you wanting the mic back? Is that what you're okay? Um, so a lot of the public comment, and I think there's two different things, Kyler. I think you're talking about the Caltrans interchange versus the connection of the road. I have no idea what I'm talking okay. about. I just got the public comment. So there's the Caltrans interchange, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to point out, but it's not completely on this map. So there was a lot of... Um, comments around an interchange and its connectivity, especially for adding volume here of what this off and on ramp is, um, because many people say that this doesn't function well. Fair? <laughs> That's a nice, nice way of putting it. It doesn't function well. It's and um, that's Interchange improvements are Caltrans projects. I know Caltrans is looking at this interchange and improvements because it doesn't function well, but that is would be a Caltrans project. Okay. Then there is improvements of connection um, in the area of Olivas Park Drive being extended, mm. and that's a city street, and part of the Olivas Park specific plan improvements in that area. So do two different things, but both important connection points, one we have control uh, over, one we do not. Okay. Does, is that clear as mud? <laughs> that, okay. That's helpful, thank you. The mud is settling a little. I, I have a clarifying question too. Okay. I think I know what it means, but when you say leverage the land next to the Metrolink, what does that mean? Um, so what that means, from, from what the general plan says, right now the Metrolink station what's around it is a lot of industrial uses and like shipping related uses. Um, typically when you have a transit station, you wanna have activity around that station so that there's more people living or working in that area. And one of the, um, the least good uses to support transit, only to support transit, next to a train station is something that does distribution with almost no jobs. Um, it doesn't mean that it's, I mean, it's well located and it was located there because there were train tracks and it was probably supporting the industry. So the reason it located there made a lot of sense, but now that there's a train there, it may, maybe it should have different uses. So I think that's what the leverage, the leverage means. Okay, Bill. I'd like to go back to the Olivas and the, so let's just start with North Bank. So my question is, in, in terms of approving traffic, we look at, we're looking at all the density. Uh, right there where Ventura Boulevard and North Bank come together, can the city prevent the right on North Bank to Ventura Boulevard? To, to restrict right turn lanes? Oh, right, right, so yeah, so you, right now you can go down North Bank towards the 101, Instead of getting on the freeway, you can make the hard right on the Ventura Boulevard. Mm. And that creates that, that crazy traffic pattern. So, I mean. And could that improve? Can we do that as part of the general plan as a transportation policy? So, so okay. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we talk to the public works about that one as well? You can come down the next road over. Matt? Have that down. Yes. So kind of in response to what Bill's talking about, which is, that what, what we're dealing with here is an area that evolved over many, many, many years without any planning. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> um, you know, welcome. Um, so the circulation is not connective. There isn't, you know, the, the, the way to get from Johnson to North Bank is very circuitous. You know, dumps you right at an off-ramp. 
it's dangerous. Yeah. Um, ultimately, what, what we need is a plan for this area. And it's a very significant piece of Ventura, and it has the potential to be an east side town center. Um, and the other thing that I've talked about is that we could think of it in, a, in some ways as a piece of a triangle of, and I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna get reaction about this, to um, the uh, river park and the wagon wheel because there is actually a, you can actually ride your bike from here to River Park on a separated class one bike path. Um, so we don't need to think of it as something all by itself. What is its role in this region? What is its role in this area? And how does it relate to the rest of Ventura? And right now it's a mess. Okay. And it has a Metrolink station. So, Kelsey. So I, that's funny, because I was going to say, um, one thing I would caution us is to make sure we don't become like River Park and Wagon Wheel, just in the sense that those aesthetically have a, um, I think it leaves a lot to be desired in terms of the layout and how they look. And I think it, if we can kind of create a distinction is to not just be like this huge sprawl of monotonous, identical buildings, we should try to do that. And I agree completely with that. Yeah. I'm not suggesting. <laughs> You're saying that there's activity and it's saying there's energy yeah. there. Um, you know, I'll just say, you know, we we, we kind of heard in the process a couple of things pretty clearly, you know, a couple of different mixed messages. Again, one was like, there's a Metrolink station here. This whole area should be mixed use. Let's re-envision this whole area. It's a new neighborhood. Um, we also heard there's really good jobs here. It's one of the few industrial areas. We should keep the industrial areas. And it's really important that even though it's a little bit, you know, messy and wasn't really planned, you know, it, it works, it's funky. And, you know, let's just let, kind of let the funk continue. And then the other thing we heard as well, let's just let anything happen that we want here and let's make this, this mixed residential, mixed use, commercial, whatever you want zone and just make it like, just allow whatever to happen happen and just sort of open things up we've kind of heard three things about about this area I mean we are it's a little bit all over the place so I just wanted to throw out kind of like again like parroting back the kind of two years of listening to the community the things that we've heard um, Bill were you and I was then, just gonna ask uh, just because again I don't I want staff to be proud of me where is the trail that we're proposing gonna is it does it terminate at Johnson or where does the trail that's going to go on the old rail right away it goes to satakoy station but where does it terminate are you talking about the grant that public works received to do the rails or trails yes basically i think it follows the whole path and i can get the plan for it like up into santa paula even right that's the goal i know it's the goal to go all the way to santa paula but where does it West starts, yeah. At the, um, over by the Metrolink station. At the, so at the Metro, so we're gonna have this class one bike path trail that'll take us that'll theoretically along, all the way to Santa Paula. Yes. So I think we should just consider that as we're talking about Wonderful. these. So since you mentioned there are three um, ideas, i am add a fourth. <laughs> Great. Um, because one of the things that I loved about this neighborhood going back 15 years was that it was very family focused, right? You had the movie theater, you had Toys R Us. It was a place where young families, I mean, when Toys R Us was still viable, you had a place where young families kind of came to do things, right? And we've, we don't have that now in town in part because we don't have as many young families, but we want to attract them, right? So I would love to see this area remain, at least the park, close to the freeway remain some sort of um, you know public entertainment area and if I had a magic wand I would also throw in a performing arts center because that is something that this town values and believes in and we don't have a space and this you know that old movie theater would be a great performing arts space okay okay um, so what do we do <laughs> the train seems to be the easiest okay. thing, you know, in terms of a mixed use. So I'm talking about the gray on the north side of the tracks. Uh, yeah, that area there. Mm -hmm. So that is... That is a... 
packing plant, isn't right. it? Is yeah. that where the proposal is to, to, to potentially do a TOD? Yeah, the that's proposal that's is, that's in three. Buildings. Oh, the three, okay. Or a TOD. What? Transit oriented development. So it's three. Yeah. Essentially, it encourages people to get on the train and you know go to Burbank, LA, wherever they would go, because that's where they park the train every night. That is the northern point of MetroLink. Okay. So I, I would so, say TOD. Like, so so area three is. E yeah, I would say area three and the gray would be some type of TOD. Oh, I see the gray north of the tracks. Yeah. Okay. Out of curiosity, do they turn the trains off? Or like, I, they've, because sometimes, sometimes they run constantly and they'll park them um, along Ash Street and it's like a safety precaution. The train has to be running 24 seven and it just sits there for like months at a time. And they said normally they park down by the Metrolink station with their train running all the time. So I just am wondering if know. that's a thing, it maybe should be considered before building a bunch of residential in the area. I think we also need to continue to be very, very cognizant. You know, if, if a lot of residential goes into this area, we're going to end up, you know, the next group of GPAC is going to be having the same discussions that are happening on the west side about removal of industrial uses because of the buildup of, in, of residential around it. So um, I, I think, you know, Part of the city zoning code is, it, it, you know, it is to prevent intrusive adjacent land uses, and I really think we need to be very cognizant of that. I do want to echo that because the proposal for the Hegis actually proposed a different location for the MetroLink station. In that, so that what they had sent over to us, so maybe that should be considered as part of that also. Yeah, and too bad Lori Brown's not here because I know she has mentioned at times that she has had, you know, had constituents that would complain about the diesel from the train running. So on the, you know, the wind blows basically like that, so the breeze, so it's going to take any diesel exhaust into those the already uh, residential areas. I would like to suggest that this area should be a specific plan. I don't think that this committee is going to figure it out and solve all these problems. There's a, and, I don't, and I think that this is an area that's going to evolve over time, and so we want to plan it in a way that allows for that to happen in a logical um, way that's friendly to the businesses that are there, that are viable. Um, but there's, you know, the, the danger is that the theater, that a developer will come in next week with plans to tear the theater down and put in something, probably housing, because that's where everything is going right now. Um, so we've got to do something to sort of, you know, proactively anticipate what it is we as a, as a community would like to see there in the specific plan. I'm, my hesitation is it's time and energy and money and it's, you know, and it's going to take a few years to do. Um, but I don't think this committee can really figure this out. Um, so. I've always found this just strange and I had no idea what to do with all of the things that are here. Um, early in this process, there was some discussion about, you know, possibly moving the Metrolink station. Where could it, I mean, I just think this is a miserable place to have, have a, a transit, um, you know, uh, it's so awkward to get in and out of, and it, it's not near anything. And I'd rather, I don't want to take a train that dumps me in a strange, uh, an awkward, such an awkward place. It just seems so awkward. So is there, I mean, and is that the purview? What can we do? Can we recommend such a thing that it go elsewhere? I, I, I agree about having a more specific plan about this because just wow, I, I mean, to just you know, make make this the gateway, and I'm like, how the heck do you make this a gateway to the city, <laughs> given the way it's currently laid out? So, is that actually something that could be a part of a recommendation that feels like what, but just a huge thing um, that feels beyond us to me as well? But that seems like one of the most awkwardly placed. Uh, commuter lines I've ever seen 
and I don't know what else. I mean, I'm just yeah. commenting. So I, don't know what to do about it. Yeah, no, I think I think we can. We talked about that, or I think we can make that as a recommendation. We looked at some places. We we actually talked to MetroLink, and they're open to different ideas um, as well. They, of course, want it to be viable because it's part of part of their mission. And I agree with you. It is the weirdest station. I first time I came out here, I thought I was going downtown. I got dropped off there. I didn't know, I didn't know where I was. Um, so yeah, it's bizarre. Um, so yeah, so I hear so two things. One is have that as a recommendation. Two is have kind of leave everything and have a specific plan. Was it, I guess leave the, the uses or do we change the uses? Um, Stephanie. I was going to um, agree with Sabrina and ask that the, holistically the whole area, at least the Johnson um, corridor, cater to young families again. And I love the idea of a performing arts center at that location, so snaps for that. Um, I am officially a Metrolink commuter. I um, wake, wake up at 4 a.m. to take it to downtown LA and I uh, upon return have met people who have literally exited the train and said where am I and I've had to give them I had to literally give directions on how they could take the bus to downtown Ventura so like it literally like people get off and they ask where where am I um, so my solution to that is to possibly have that gray box that is currently big warehouses like a flooring I think company convert that to um, it assuming that Metrolink stays where it is right now have that be commercial in a way that has a better uh, you know inner city bus kind of route that caters to it and have that be commercial so that once you get off the train there's lights, there's a something that just shows you that you've arrived. Because right now it's literally, uh, and there's housing, trust me, there's a lot of condos that are built right there. And actually just last Wednesday, there was a shooting that happened among those. And now I, my mom doesn't want me to walk up to my house. And that's a whole thing. And so like having something that you know, is a little softer and friendlier and inviting to the people who just get off of the train. Um, and I think could be done with that gray parcel right there. And the gray parcel, which, I'm sorry, which, that the guy. north of that one? Mm -hmm. Light gray, sorry, okay. light gray. Just wanna light make sure. I, I think one of the things that makes the area struggle so much economically is not the zoning or the land use designations it is the access because it's just such a pain to get off it's such a pain to get back on the freeway and so i think until that is remedied it doesn't really matter what you zone. Like, i mean right now people can can build apartments which are seemingly in very high demand in the mixed use two and three that exists all right along there but they're not doing it and i have to assume that's because it is a really hard, and that's I think why the retail struggled as well, is because people didn't want to get off the freeway and pop into the stores because there are way more convenient options to do that. I comment on the on the train thing again. Um, I think either we need to make it a focal point of that whole area or move it completely out because it seems like a lot of folks I talk to who've been here a long time don't even know where the train station is. They go, where, where are you? Where are you talking about? Where is it? Where is it? It's very hard to find. It, I don't know what, how much use it actually gets, uh, but if it did get moved, that would give us some options for more development down that area. Okay. I don't know if it'd be by the fairgrounds or some other third location. Yeah. Okay. Scott. So this is Scott McCarty. Uh, given Louise's earlier comments about the Hiji property, uh, about which the public comment was was provided for this meeting, but we didn't have really a good time to review it. What I'm thinking is that since that proposal, as part of it, moves the Metrolink station, um, it kind of becomes a domino effect. We're having some concern about Area 3 and the area just north of uh, Area 3. Uh, and perhaps if we took a deeper dive into the Hiji property proposal, that would be a springboard with which we could make a better determination about what to do with the rest of the area. Um, so, so my suggestion is perhaps we should, we should delve into the, the, uh, the public comment regarding the Hiji property and see how that might affect 
the whole uh, discussion of this of, the, of Johnson. And, and really, what you're saying is just because it moves the station. Because again, I, I thought I heard that it's in a sore area, which in which is county sore. Is that right? Just I want to. I believe so. You know, the the thing is, is that. It, it, just because something is in the sore area does not necessarily mean that that one it's 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 the most viable or suitable for agriculture and two doesn't mean that as part of a long-term plan which is my understanding this general plan is a long-term yep. plan um, that that we can't discuss it and present it as possibly an option for consideration Lee Manera did the same thing outside of Santa Paula it did take them 17 years but they were able to get you know the 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 vote and the approval etc and it was because Santa Paula incorporated into their general plan and there was support from the Santa Paula City Council just, again I just I wanted to be kind of clear on that and, I, and you know I think that there's you know I, I hear your point and we can I think um, it seems that to delay the vision of this area to see if that goes forward um, so if you move the Metrolink is you know there's, a, there's I would have some concerns over is over it, that I have a question is there has there been a proposal I remember early on when we started the GPAC meetings there was a debate of or was that the housing element discussion of including this the the, the area three as part of that uh, for it um, so, Bill, you're right. When the housing element was being discussed, the property owner in the Area 3 came forward with a transit-oriented development, TOD. Um, there was concern from the Montavo community area about just including that straight into the housing element and wanted further discussion, so we didn't identify it as a housing element site, um, so that discussions could happen in this forum. Is there data on how successful transit-oriented developments are in yes. communities like ours? Just because yes. they, are they super successful? Yes. Interesting. I mean, it depends on where the transit goes, but yet, yes, they are. And again, it's not just about the transit station; it's about creating a neighborhood and a destination and mixed uses all together. So it's the combination. Um, I just can. I want to pause for one second here. It's it's eight forty. Um, we, we said we're going to have some public comment at the end as well. Can I actually get a show of hands of folks who would like to speak at the end so we can allocate some time? Um, so just, again, I like, so we have three people, correct? Mm -hmm. No, no one's, any, any additions? Four people. Okay. Four, 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 going on five, going on five, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> you in the back. <laughs> Okay, great. Thanks. Um, all right. So, what, Sabrina? No. Finish. No, I was going to say, what do we do? Oh well, Sabrina, you're going to tell us. <laughs> you're answering no, all the I'm questions gonna, tonight. So, I was just going to suggest that um, I think removing the train, the transit conversation from this portion of it. I mean, we have identified that this area serves a really critical commercial and industrial use, right? And that while there is some planned housing here, it's currently serving an important use. Yes, the transportation aspect needs to be improved and so people can get on and off the freeway safely. But there are a lot of small businesses and medium businesses that are in this area that are doing well and that we want to continue to provide a space for. So, um, and, and my, my comment about one was really about preserving commercial space, whether that's public facing commercial space or others, right? So. Okay. Other thoughts? I just want to add, I don't necessarily want to speak for the entire Montalvo Community Council, but I know that the Montalvo area is very proud of the train station. We just had a mural dedicated that has a big train on it. Right next I mean, to it. I, that was the sense I got that they don't want to lose the train station and have it mo just move downtown. Okay, Pete? Um, well, one question, and I don't know if we're going to go back to Area 1, but I had for Area 1, it is one of the overlay zones for the housing element. And if I remember rightly, it was four stories for that overlay. Nate, if you remember. I don't off the top of my head. I, I think it, I'm like I'm pretty sure it was because currently it's C two, so it's six. And when it went to four, I was really surprised. So some of those suggestions about I don't think the housing element prescribed height, but densities for that area. But the overlay and did. We haven't added an overlay yet. Okay, because you presented an overlay. 
we we did talk about at a DRC meeting different types of overlays. So there was the lower density overlay, which would be like two to three story, a medium kind of density overlay, which would be the the middle block, and then a large or uh, a higher density overlay, which would be the, be the five to six. So it's a menu, and then you apply it to the sites according to what's allowed. Okay, yeah, because you were talking about doing that citywide, but I thought there was an overlay for this parcel and an overlay for the Baylor Street by the college, just so we can get the housing element through. But, and Matt um, mentioned an overlay earlier, so that's kind of why I was going that way. We will be rezoning the sites and applying a form-based code overlay to them. So I, I guess I'm hearing, I just wanna maybe state what I've heard so far, at least, which is areas two and three and most of four essentially stay kind of the way they are for now um, to support the the commercial and the industrial uses that are there even even if they're not pretty they're viable they provide jobs um, but that there is a specific plan for this area that actually looks at it holistically um, and then um, area one you know it could be either keep it that you know want to support i hear, heard support commercial uses but there's a bunch of commercial uses that were there that are no longer there and they're just commercial buildings so right now you kind of have nothing so um you know like the movie theater is that shopping center is dead right lots of <laughs> lots of free parking um so help someone help me out here with with direction on what we should do still so i think we were also talking about possibly carving out some in number three with commercial to support the the transit people. I heard that was in four, the gr the light gray in four. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so maybe two and three stay. And what about what if one was all commercial mixed use? Okay, could, could I make a proposal that we, we kind of table the discussion? So tomorrow we have a this. Tomorrow we start with the west side and downtown. That's that's the beginning, and then we're going to pick up back here on Johnson. Could we get a couple of the transportation questions answered, like where the trail is gonna go? There's a trail along the uh, backside of the, uh, the North Bank uh, the property there, and then how the Olivas is gonna go, so we can at least kind of see that vision first, and then pick up from there. I, I agree. I think I think we need to know what's happening in there. What's what resources will people have? Like, where is there a plan for the train station? If we moved it somewhere, um, I think the accessibility and the and the resources and the train you know the train station um, is going to dictate what we well, the, can. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the train station right now there is no plan to move it. Right. So it, right now it's staying and. It's it's a longer term thing to move it. It's owned by the VCTC, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're not. They don't own another piece of property somewhere else. Right. They're they're. This is where the station is. If there were, it's a it's a very long term thing to think about moving it. Yeah. How the extension's going to work? The connection to Johnson. The, the rails to trails, and then did you say one other thing? Uh, along uh, the the Johnson what. On the back there, you've got the green space. I know that the, the, yeah. the apartment the complex that's going in has got a trail. So does that trail connect all the way up to the rails to trails or? Yes. Yeah, it goes all the way up. Yeah, there's just, I mean, there's a lot of backbone going into this thing. I mean, the potential is just huge for this area. Yes. Yeah. Probably more so than any other area yeah, in the city, yeah. Okay, Nick. I, I agree with all of that. I, the, uh, that's a good way to put it. There's a lot of backbone, there's a lot of infrastructure, there's a lot of stuff going on here that's important to the community. The, re the potential to have a real, actual Metrolink place where you can connect to, you know, Southern California, Los Angeles, that's awesome. Um, the area is, there, there's just a lot of, you know, vital business there. There's a lot of suffering commercial that is not working right now. The place needs to get fixed. So maybe what we could do is, as a, as a broad, far-reaching committee is identify the kind of the planning policies that we think need to be addressed by this area and direct that a specific plan get prepared. Because I think ultimately, um, 
an, a specific plan or an area plan, some kind of a planning mechanism that helps this place evolve logically over a period of time, because it won't happen fast. But some of it could happen fast and in a not good way if we don't do something proactively. Okay. Um, can I, I want to just sort of build on that for one second, which is, you know, we're, we are going to have to make some decision at some point about this. And I'm wondering if, um, if one or two people want to at least give a little bit of thought between now and when we talk about it next, which is not tomorrow, um, as to what those planning principles could be, at least to get us started looking through past information. Um, if someone has ideas to do that, we can also jump in and do some of it, but, but if someone kind of really feels like they want to dig in, maybe we can have a volunteer just to bring something back to the group. Just to throw that out there. Um, let's see, uh, let's see a show of hands for who wants to do it. That's what I thought. Um, I, but I don't want to do it alone. I need okay. people who counter my... All right. So, and, I, and this isn't they get to make all the decisions. It's just, just to kind of come think, just think together a little bit and maybe come back to the group so we can do a little bit offline so we're, there's a starting point because I feel like we're, we're struggling with this area a little bit. I do think we need to be careful about doing that, though. I mean, it, this is a public process. It's, it's, so just a star, it's a starting point for the conversation. I, I know, I, but, I, but I do feel like I need to say that. I, um, that I we agree. have public in the room and the more we can keep in the public eye the 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 more the buy-in will be and the acceptance for this general plan so yeah. so it's you know I'm not saying don't do it I just saying be very very cautious I, and I cognizant of the of I, the I hear, optics. Hear you on. The, the other option is that we go off and do that and give you something to start with okay and I can Okay, so a few people, just to, again, this is, this is not to pull anything out of the public, and in fact, if, if you want to meet here and people can come, great. Um, but I just, you know, maybe to get some thoughts going um, to, to bring back to the group on the, 20, on the 21st. Okay, and then we'll just connect. Okay, um, let's, so we'll kind of close on this one for now. And then we have, um, we have public comments. So again, um, can I see the show? Maybe people can come up and fill out their form as they're coming. If you just want to line up here and say your name. Um, we have uh, five people. So we could do two minutes per public comment. Um, Kathy Bremer, I live in the college area, so I have a few things to say about that. First, I want to say something quick about Johnson Drive. It is supposed to be the gateway to the city from the southern access to Ventura, and we have a Motel 6 there. So I agree with Nick that we need to do something, and we approve developments parcel by parcel instead of having a plan for the area to be welcoming and something that's really attractive. So I, that's it for Johnson Drive. Um, Pete spoke for me multiple times this evening about respecting existing neighborhoods. I think that's really important and an example is the partnership between the Methodist Church and um, people's self-help housing for the Methodist Church property on Telegraph. They really made an effort to be respectful to the adjacent community. Um, and I know you, you're saying that goes in as a policy, but that really, that is significantly important. What Louise just pointed out, if we want buy-in, if we want acceptance, we need to respect existing neighborhoods and residents. Oh, and I had a little comment on the 2A that is behind the gym on Telegraph. Um, that is a private road that enters there, and that behind the light purple, the yellow that was proposed to be something, um, accesses along a private road and through the gym parking lot. So unless there's access out to Day Road, that is really a non-starter. Um, speaking for Ashwood Center, Area 1, there are two viable restaurants. There's a CVS, there's a medical clinic. There's stuff going on there. So if we were to do any housing, 
along in area one it would have to be a mixed use environment where you retain the ex existing retail the viable retail um, and just add some housing in some part of that Ashwood Center. The other thing is, I think there are about seven. We're, we're at about two minutes. Oh, okay. okay. There are about seven owners of that shopping center, so that's problematic too. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. I'm Paul Sheehan with Dyer Sheehan Group here in Ventura, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the owners of the six and a quarter acre site at 6205 Ventura Boulevard, which is directly south and adjacent to the Metrolink station. Most of you know this site as the older beige colored metal buildings you see on the northbound side of the 101 freeway with the big lemon on the side of it. And uh, it is also the majority portion of area three up there, the westerly portion. Um, the existing buildings are 50 to 70 years old and in continual need of costly repair. And all the leases are coming up for expiration in the next two to four years. And as a result, the property owners envision this as an exciting opportunity for redevelopment of the site. Their vision is high quality, transit oriented, multifamily housing. And for the past 18 months, my business partner, Don Dyer, and myself have worked with them and their architects to study the site and surrounding area and to preliminarily assess its redevelopment potential. We've come up with a preliminary conceptual site plan and yield study to determine what might make sense on this property. We've done an operational pro forma to make sure that it was financially feasible. We've discussed this with senior city staff with the Ventura County Transportation Commission, with Gold Coast Transit District, and with Metrolink, just to determine the issues and the opportunities. And we even did a preliminary presentation back in May to the Montalvo Community Council. With a compatible land use designation and corresponding zoning, this site could support transit-oriented multifamily rental community of approximately 361 units with ample amenities, open space, and on-site parking. Our current concept includes 334 conventional apartments in a five-story configuration, 27 large three-story townhomes surrounding a courtyard, and 1,500 square feet Time is almost up. retail space on the westerly end of the property to serve both the residents and the users of the Metrolink station. We're also aware the city will require 15% affordable housing. We've factored that into it. Thank you. We think this project works and would very much hope you guys consider giving it a mixed use three designation as was shown in one of the options of the land use. Thank you very much. Haku, Kiantik, Marianne. Hi, my name is Marianne. I am Marianne. definitely a native to this area. I have lineage and history that dates back over 13,000 years. I think what we're missing and what I'm not hearing at all is about the people that have lived here 100 years, 50 years, who have really developed and made Ventura what it is. People come from all over to Ventura and Santa Barbara because these territories are gorgeous. But the people that have lived here and worked here can no longer afford to live here. They're either seniors, they're being pushed out, or the BIPOC community that is almost non-existent in Ventura. Now, as you see in this meeting, there's not very many of us. I think these maps, unfortunately, are very bad representation of the area. We have the means, we have technology to do drone footage so that you can zoom in, zoom out, look at the areas to see how much actual space we have and what we're limited to. I don't like using the term green space because grass is not native to this area. It's either purple needle grass or bunch grass. And purple needle grass looks gray, but that's healthy. These are historically flood zones and fire areas. The Shumash called these mountains in Shumash the mountains that fall. So we know with heavy rain, as we're seeing, we're getting flooded, flooding, we're getting mudslides. 
There's so much that needs to be taken in account to this that I feel our communities are not here speaking on. I saw the map. I currently live in Old Town Sadequay, which was that tiny little purple spot that is unincorporated that was on your map for the east side. Um, it's eight to nine streets big. There's like, there's no room. <laughs> so I hear people talking about adding a grocery store. There's currently five stores there, all liquor stores, but you can purchase foods and other things. One of the stores has been there 93 years yet, though, so it's a Japanese store that during the time the original family was sent to an encampment, somebody took care of the store, then they came back, and now his son still runs it. Very, very, very elderly couple. But these people have invested tax dollars, money, and time into our communities that we didn't never hear about, the people behind the scenes doing all the work. So I think we do need a grocery store. We don't need a large grocery store. San Jose has a lot of their Safeway, which is our equivalent to Vaughn's, the same store. They call them like a Safeway Cafe or Safeway Market, which is a grocery store, but it's a lot smaller, but it still contains everything that you need. So I think those areas, especially there in that eight to nine street, we can't fit anything else. There's already two and three homes and one piece of land because that's how that land was originally developed. Time, time, some, if you could wrap up, thank you. Okay, and I just wanted to say that name, Satikoy, Satikoy, that's the original Shumash name of the territory. So we continually, I know there's CEQA and there's all these laws, but every law has a loophole. We are digging up tons of villages with not a blink of an eye. And when you say make it attractive, attractive for who? How do we encompass something that's attractive to everybody? Thank you. But keep the people that we still have. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Got my notes on there. Good to see you, everybody. Volunteers, thank you so much for putting your time in. Sorry, oh. That was a comment card. Oh, okay. It's all good. <laughs> Um, I have a few comments about some of the stuff. Uh, east side, mostly about the charm and the uniqueness of having agriculture within your community. Something that really just makes our town special. And as we evolve that, of course, it has to be an economic plan that works for the landowners. So can we get unique and really creating ways? Maybe it's through farm work housing, educational tours through these lands. I think that we can really start to look at unique ways to preserve our farmland as open space within our community to really remain Ventura and not LA Ventura. It's a term you hear over and over again. And from discussion tonight, I just hear housing and housing and as many places as housing. I do think there are some good ideas for housing on here. If we pull up the slide from the college, sorry for my little hand raising there, Nada, earlier, but I wanted to just distinctly show that big wave Dave on Ashwood, if it's commercial red in that square, yes, right there, maybe if we, if we cut that property in half and put housing next to Denny's there. So if you keep Denny's commercial and almost the housing next to that, somebody mentioned they don't wanna sell, but I think that area right there is a unique area that's not divided in that picture. Something else real fast on Johnson Drive. Um, just understand the importance of Johnson Drive. I view this whole area on the bottom one zone as something that should be all the same zoning. Really make that attractive who to whoever can possibly maybe buy multiple spots. I know people know more about the, the landowners and stuff. I see almost a property that works cohesively together, not in the dark purple now because that's overbuilt, but using the Motel 6, let's get it out of here. You know, tell the Coastal Commission we'll put a different hotel in. A, a CHP almost went into the purple area is there. But maybe almost like a sky bridge, two sky bridges going across from Johnson to one side over North Bank there, not creating the unattractive thing that I see over by the collection area on the housing, but something that can be really entering to Ventura to really see our, our, our shine and our really attractiveness there. Of course, if we don't eminently domain some of the houses on Johnson Drive, we're never gonna have the usage that we need to the government center. That's a different story. How do we work on traffic on Victoria, on Johnson, if we build in these areas? Because those neighborhoods directly above this area will be greatly affected. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you very much. Okay, one more comment. Okay, gonna come up. Right here is fine. Okay. Is this your name? Thank you. Hi, my name is Mark Abbey. I'm the chair of the Montavo Community Council. I do also happen to be on the planning commission. Um, I'm sorry I'm not more prepared tonight. I got on the internet and I was, wow, you guys are having a full-blown discussion on Johnson and Montavo communities not represented. 
Um, I heard a lot of good comments, thoughtful talk about uh, from Councilmember McReynolds regarding a possible TOD. Um, we do have some concerns about adjacency issues with housing on the other side of the railway. That's not a deal breaker, but that's something that needs to be discussed. Also, you have on Ventura Boulevard critical traffic circulation that's kind of really bad. We already know at North Bank and the freeway exit. And under the former community development director, he, he said that we couldn't solve the traffic circulation along Johnson and North Bank. Why not? I did hear from Mr. Deitch possible talk about a specific plan, a specific plan that includes the community that already lives there and has input into it. Um, I heard from Trustee Rodriguez, uh, Sabrina Rodriguez, uh, we'd love to see uh, more families. The a uh, uh, civic auditorium, uh, just a thought on that. Um, you've got land at uh, the exit uh, where the, between Mobile and, and uh, the Six Motel, um, but you would not want to put housing like they did in um, Wagon Wheel where it's right up against Oxnard Boulevard. You would not want to put that right up against the freeway. You've got air quality issues, but couldn't you see having perhaps a public auditorium there? I just thought that, I'm not saying I'm set on that idea. It's just, that's creative thinking. Um, also in section four, uh, the land east of Grand Avenue uh, that is currently MPD, Manufacturing Plan Development, that's right up against um, residential. And, uh, you know, you might want to consider possibly mixed use three or uh, uh, three-story family dwelling. But uh, you've, you've got to be, is it my time? Oh, time's up. All right. Uh, there's much more of a discussion that needs to pick, take place. The traffic circulation parameter is massive. It's huge. How that's done correctly can affect District 6 immensely. I know District 4 and 5 may not think about it as much to see the development in District 6 and not in their developments might potentially be good. But they have to go through this area too, and let's make a nice area for everyone, including District 6 current residences. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abbey. Okay, I think that's it for, um, for public comments. Um, did you turn that off? What? Um, that's a good question. Are, can we have this room all day, or do we have to clean up? I was wondering that too. So I think um, we'll clean it up. Okay, so we're going to, let's um, go ahead and, and leave your things. We'll clean it up if we have to in the morning. Um, thank you all. Tonight we're going to close our meeting. Tomorrow we're going to start um, with the west side um, and then move on to the downtown. Um, we are going to start with maybe 20 minutes of public comment at the beginning. Um, tomorrow we'll divide it up by the number of folks and then we'll continue public comment at the end. Um, we are also going to have... Um, simultaneous interpretation tomorrow night um, into Spanish. So if, um, if you know anyone who is a um, monolingual Spanish speaker, you can let them know. Um, we have put that out uh, as well, that as an announcement. So um, with that, we're a few minutes past time, but thank you all for the comments tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Congratulations. <laughs> Hold up, because we reached out, yeah. We sent... Uh